Shalabrato Supaka. Hold hands together. Zike Prarusa Sebra Digi Baratu Soso Prahata Kataya. Please take it serious. Make sure you are praying inside, outside. Mandela Kapros Kapreya Shibehere to Supretiara. Every time spent in your presence brings with it transformation, brings with it light. Kabato Zata Predeke Shibra Hatabaria Dabalada Bos. Ninda Kapraska Dabari Keto Shibredia Ladabos. Pray in the spirit. Lika Taro Saderianda Kapariada. Release the power and the grace. Kela to Shebra Nizia. Ligeto Pratosa Sibre Digede Gede Baladabos. Embroto Soto Katabarada Baladabaka Sada Bredege de Gede Baladabos. Jige dege 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 de kaparoto soprendi gara balarabosh impratos kaprato shakate prosata labarite kosi gete balata inte katorato zekete keria da balarosh ingredo zuzo bakata balarabare to kosu preti gedi balaraba manda kata prata kata barada barada balada bakaria de balarabosh zekete kete kete balarabosh. Embroto so so preke te ke te ke te ke te balarabos. Zaprato kato prate se ke te le bokorit. Embrato so so preke te barada balaraba. Shakata prata kata rada balaraba. Likato prasi badiara bos. Keep praying. Lika pras kabaranda bash kabrateke so baria te balaraba. Alleluia. Alleluia. Father, visit me tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your voice and pray. Visit me tonight. Change my life. Visit me tonight in the name of Jesus. Jaka parato ko parado shaprete ke te la baroto subaya. Like te proto sobrete ke te barada balada ba. Strange visitations by the Spirit. Le pro sada barato ko tu barada ba. Alleluia. 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 Last prayer point. Every spirit of distraction, every spirit of familiarity, every spirit of carelessness in the presence of God that will make me miss my word tonight, I challenge you in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and pray. Some of you are not praying. Open your mouth and pray. Shalabako pratalabalikatai. Lord, I will not be careless with your word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good evening, everybody. The Lord will change your life in a remarkable way this night. In the name of Jesus. Greet someone by your left and right and please sit down and be ready to write and listen. God wants to speak to us seriously this night. Hallelujah. God wants to speak to us seriously tonight I truly believe that tonight's meeting is a destiny encounter but every meeting is a destiny encounter but particularly tonight my heart is heavy to just offload a lot of very serious things this night hallelujah 
I love it when God puts it in my heart to challenge our lives and our destinies. Tonight's talk is a very serious talk and I want you to pay attention. Don't just write, listen and receive. Amen. Someone is changing this night. Take me into the holy of holies. Take me in by the blood of the Lamb. Take me into the holy of holies. Take the coal, touch my lips, here I am. Take me into the holy of holies. Take me in by the blood of the Lamb. Take me into the holy of holies. Take the coal, touch my lips, here I am. Would you take the coal, touch my lips, here I am. Take the coal, touch my lips, here I am. Spirit of the living God, speak to your people. You have instructed this meeting and you have brought a word tonight. Someone's destiny is dependent on this word. There are people following online. There are people listening there are thousands and millions more that will listen after tonight I pray oh God that you will put your anointing and your grace upon this teaching may it not be trivialized oh God I pray that you activate destinies in a strange way tonight in the name of Jesus answer the questions that are in the hearts of your people release the anointings that they desire for the next level of their lives Lord we thank you for people here who are sick oppressed who are here just trusting you for a touch some do not even know what the name of their issues are but i pray that they will receive a touch from god tonight in the name of jesus christ god bless you ecclesiastes 10 15 ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 15 jesus we bless you It's always a pleasure to bring God's word. And every time the word of God comes, it comes not just to challenge us, but to change us. If you are not changed by the word, listen, if the word of God cannot change you, then nothing else can change you. Are we together? Because the word of God created the heavens and the earth. Praise the Lord. Ecclesiastes 10 verse 15. Read it slowly. Read it intelligently. Read it with understanding. One to read. Ah, no, 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 no. Slowly doesn't mean quietly. One to read. He never said the labor of the foolish, whereas some of them would have found out why some escaped. But he says, the labor of the foolish the problem is not the labor the problem is those who are laboring there is a condition the bible says the labor of the foolish does what weary yet every one of them why because he knoweth not that's what makes him foolish because he does not know how to go to the city there is a way to go to the city. There is a formula to go to the city. Listen, please. There is a system that can take a man from where he is to his place in destiny. And the Bible says, the foolish and the wise do the same thing, seemingly. They are all laboring. But then the Bible says, it wearied every one of them. And this is why it worries them. It says they do not know how. It did say they do not know the name of the city. They know what they want. They know where they want to go to. But the system, the system to take them from where they are to where they need to be. You know, I've said it again and again that believers are not confused as to 
the outcome of their lives what they want we all know what we want or at least we have an idea the challenge usually is the understanding of what it will take to leave us from where we are to where we need to be and i pray that god will open our eyes in the name of jesus write this word down destiny write this word down destiny destiny the word destiny is a very interesting word there's almost no man of god who has not spoken about this word we love it so much we dream about it we discuss it but the bible says listen please that there is a path listen there is a path that seemeth right but then it says the end thereof are the ways of death are we together now the word destiny simply means your predefined place of fulfillment write it down please i'll give you a few definitions quickly your predefined place of fulfillment predefined means that you do not guess in the loins of prophecy and in the loins of time there is a place allocated for you please listen there is a place in destiny there is a place in prophecy allocated for each and every one of us and your fulfillment and your relevance in life is tied to not only your discovery but your arrival you there is a condition there is a place where you must arrive to be able to find the joy and the fulfillment of living it's called destiny the second definition of destiny is the place where your assignment finds full expression your destiny represents the place where your assignment your purpose on earth your reason for living your destiny represents the place where you can say experientially that I am living the reason for which I am born I am making impact number three I went ahead of myself the third definition of destiny is the place of notable and consistent impact the place of notable and consistent impact no longer the place of desire no longer the place of ambition that you have gotten to a place where your impact is notable your impact is significant the last definition of the word destiny destiny also represents a place where you have earned the right to transform lives and to watch those lives transform others not just that you are transforming lives you are fulfilling destiny to the extent to which you have earned the right to transform lives and you have the privilege in your lifetime of watching those lives you have transformed transform others hallelujah dr miles munro of blessed memory a man who has changed my life so much i honor him in life and in death he said this he said the greatest tragedy in life is not death the greatest tragedy in life is a life without a purpose a life without a meaning a life without a reason for living that you get up in the morning and there is no constructive definition as to what justifies your living there are so many people angry and frustrated in life listen please we attempt to cover the need for activating and fulfilling destiny with many things we try education 
and then you know after many years of laborious study we don't seem to make sense out of our sacrifice we try marriage and for many people it's hell they are living in hell literally we try money we try several things in an attempt to get to that place but it doesn't seem to bring that fulfillment and satisfaction and many people in Nigeria in their old age are full of regrets are full of pain anointed people inclusive so tonight I want to challenge us there's nothing that gives me joy as seeing an individual or a people listen please living a life of purpose and a life of meaning your need for the anointing is useless without an understanding of destiny your need for financial prosperity your need for a wife or a husband your need for children your need for influence is absolutely useless if you do not understand God's idea of destiny say there is a place for me in life I want you to shout it with conviction listen there is no man born of a woman I know you've heard it but listen to it with an anointing on it there is no man born of a woman regardless of the conditions that surrounded your birth Dr. Miles Munro said there may be illegitimate parents but there are not there may be illegitimate relationships but there are no illegitimate children the concept of an illegitimate child is just a sociocultural term it does not exist there's no such thing as an illegitimate child are we together everybody that appears on this earth appears for a reason intentionally allowed to come nobody listen nobody has the power in himself to just fabricate a child and bring him in this realm are we together now so every one of us seated here and those following and listening we have a place in life and destiny but so many people never get to discover it so many people never get to live in the reality in fact it's, it's cheaper to not even discover it than to discover it and never actualize it in your lifetime you can justify your pain by saying i never had a, an opportunity to know but then it's painful when you know that this is the prophetic blueprint of my life and then you never get to live it are we together there is no one sent here on earth by mistake. You just arrive and then you say, Lord, why am I here? And God will say, ah, sorry, oh, let's check. Why is he here exactly? No, 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 no. We can choose to refuse to become the prophecy upon our lives. We can reject God's program for our lives and create another program by ourselves. But anyone who will find fulfillment, especially in this end time, they are men and women who must align to the purposes of the kingdom. Listen, you are not here to create a program for yourself. You are here to walk in a program that has been predestined. Are we together? Jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 5. He was speaking to a little boy called Jeremiah. Revealing to him his prophetic destiny. This was a little boy who was destined to be a prophet. To speak the purposes of God over nations. And here he was having an encounter with the Lord. And then he was receiving a download of the blueprint. What he would live for. What he would die for. And here's what he says. Before I formed thee in the belly. I knew thee and before thou camest forth out of the womb I sanctified thee and I did what ordained thee a prophet to the nations so on on Jeremiah's day of birth Jeremiah's mother would have held him and looked at him and said wow little child very helpless but in the loins of prophecy that was a prophet when you read further, it begins to reveal the extent of his prophetic influence. How that he was vested with the responsibility of not only speaking God's counsel to individuals, but to kings, to nations, to nobles. It was up to Jeremiah to never fulfill that. There was a man in the Bible called Elisha. And the Bible tells us that Elisha was a farmer. But in that farmer was a prophet. A prophet who would do mighty things. He would have died a farmer 
because he did not know the road to the city but something happened in his life may you find the road map to your destiny in the name of jesus christ let me tell you you see jealousy look up please jealousy resentment huh all of this criticism backbiting are a direct product of the confusion usually when we meet a stumbling block on our road to destiny and we are surrounded by all kinds of vagueness and confusion that idleness in our confusion will make us to turn and when you see another life working with a level of dexterity and accuracy it usually will create a reaction that reaction is what we call resentment that reaction is what we call criticism are we together now so it's not about saying stop criticizing people you have to be too busy in your idleness you there is nothing else to do but when you find something that occupies you the time span a match for you will look too short the a sense of urgency will drive you like a madman are we together now everyone has a destiny in christ hebrews chapter 10 verse 7 jesus who was a portrait of our life the firstborn among the many brethren in the similitude of our life said he said lo i come in the volume of the book it is written of me to do thy will O god lo i come this is why i came when jesus showed up no confusion he understood exactly the blueprint of his life when he went to the temple in luke chapter 4 the bible says it was given to him the scroll of Isaiah, the prophecy that isaiah prophesied about him and then he began to read the spirit of the lord is upon me because this and that and that look at a little boy at age 12 he had discovered his assignment already was about at the temple studying and preparing for a great destiny to an extent that he told his parents he said ah, do you not know are you no longer uh, um well not bible students but do you no longer go to the temple to hear the prophecy mary have you forgotten i thought you said the angel spoke to you why are you questioning my zeal to fulfill the reason for which i was born 33 and a half years and he made an impact with his life that for eternity we will never recover truly truly i believe in long life but sincerely speaking it's not how long you live but how effective there is a way a man's one year can become someone else's lifetime an impact in one year can be so transgenerational jesus died at 33 and a half or a quarter years old but out of that 33 years only three years were used in active ministry are we together lo i come in the volume of the book as it is written of me tonight i want to share with us on the requirements for manifesting your destiny that's not a topic it's just what i want to do now the requirements the cost dimension many of us are aware i'm not so much about the discovery as it is manifesting it I've, I've done a teaching discovering your purpose you can get it and several other teachings along the um, the lines of destiny but tonight the lord put it in my heart to teach us there is a system everybody said there is a system you're not going to walk to to your place of destiny just um by default nothing works in life until you walk it nothing moves in life until you move it right newton's first law of mechanics nothing will move until you move it you sit down the way you are nothing will change you will grow older the only thing that will change is your age you are celebrating 35 36 then you jump to 47 48 but your life is not moving do you know my concept of birthdays i truly believe in celebrating birthdays but birthday is not just the fact that you were born in my opinion birthdays should be celebrated only when purpose is discovered and is being lived you truly do not have a right you have a right to thank god for being born but you have no right to celebrate your birthday what are you celebrating 
you should celebrate the reason for living if your life is so impactful you will not even be the one celebrating you would have blessed people too much they will be too grateful to leave you when you have to call everybody and remind them hi ah, hey, jimmy Abba, you mean you, you, are, you are just remembering that it's my birthday it's a message read the writings on the wall your life is not notable enough there are people they prepare for their birthdays one year as soon as they finish one they start what do i do for him for all that he has done in my life some of us harass people we have never invested in their lives two weeks to my birthday said just to let you know that it's my birthday and you send a general bulk message again reminder and then out of those 200 people maybe only two or three it's a message it's not for you to be angry it's a sign that your life is not blessing anybody notably let me tell you no matter how dark and depraved people are when you bless their lives they become too grateful to not notice it is God speaking to us I want to share with you some strong requirements you must be determined to not just succeed but fulfill your destiny my concept of success is fulfilling your assignment not just moving forward not just getting married not just finishing school not just getting a job or a promotion or a raise all those things are periphery the, the truth is listen listen let me tell you if you do not find out god's goal for your life and you are not living it you are wasting your time and you are wasting the time of others amen are we together I like you to pray a prayer before we go into the details of the requirement and say Lord any price for my destiny I receive grace to pray it lift your voice if you are not ready you don't have to pray you won't go to hell but be sure that you are not going to rise any price for my destiny Lord I'm tired of living my life carelessly I'm growing older time is going there's nothing that is giving my life meaning as I listen to your word now Lord if it will sting me let it sting me but my heart my mind my spirit is open let no price be too great oh God for my destiny let no price be too great for my destiny are you praying Lord there is an anointing upon my life the nations must drink from there is no price that is too great make sure you are praying don't be careless tonight you are about to hear something that will change your life some of you change your lineage because of you through you you've been complaining about what has happened now god is giving you a choice to make a decision that probably your parents did not make lord let pain let pain not stand my way to greatness give me grace to conquer pain give me grace to conquer shame hallelujah let's write number one requirement to fulfilling your god-given destiny the first requirement is an encounter with jesus a genuine encounter with jesus not coming out for an altar call that's important but an encounter with Jesus. John 7. When you read John 7. John 3, I'm sorry. Verse 7. Actually, it's 3 to 7. John chapter 3. The encounter that Nicodemus had with Jesus. Now, understand this. The context of that scripture is very interesting. Because Nicodemus was a teacher of the law. Nicodemus was a doctor. He was a philosopher. He was intelligent. He was a graduate. He was even employed. Nicodemus was not a small man. He was a man of influence. But every time 
together with his colleagues they kept insulting jesus castigating jesus but they were secret fears and frustration nicodemus got to a point where his life was not making sense and then he sneaked in by night and came to jesus and then he says rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from god for no man can do these things except god be with him and then jesus said verily verily i say unto you right he said except ye be born again you shall not see the kingdom of god now he, he begins to talk how can i be born again will i enter into my mother's womb and then verse 5 he now says um you know verily verily i say unto you except ye be born of the water and of the spirit then you cannot enter the kingdom right then jesus now begins to speak and all of that and says the wind blow it where it listed verse seven that's where i'm really going to verse seven this is what he said marvel not that i say unto you ye must be born again it didn't say ye may it didn't say ye should being born again is not an advice being born again is a requirement writing jam is not an advice writing jam is a requirement having five credits no story is not an advice are we together is the necessary and sufficient condition to gain admission let me tell you life has requirements there is a cut off point the starting point is born again it's amazing how many people want to walk with god but they don't want to be born again they want to be around church they want to be around the things of god they want to have christian names being born again is more than just confessing jesus being born again is prioritizing god that god becomes your obsession your priority and your motivation there's no hope of leaving him that's born again because he he, he explained it he said you must be born of two things the water and the spirit the water there represents the ministry of the word the cleansing power of the word an encounter with the holy ghost being born again is not just cheap talk where you just come and stand i believe in you you are pinching yourself and laughing it may be a starting point but i'm telling you being born again is much more than jesus becoming one of those important deities there is a herbalist at home there is jesus there is the charm it's just that he's the most important of all of them you are not born again please i'm saying this whether you are listening here and you are or you are following online if you have any other charm any other talisman any other material point of reference point of of activating the realm of the spirit outside of christ and everything that is consistent with his character you are not born again very simple are we together dear you can't tell me you are born again and then under certain conditions you can receive something you know and many of us listen many of us young people you may be laughing at me but there's something they gave you from home they say look life this life is more than what you are seeing that is true you need help that is true but the, where the problem starts is what you are giving they pray for you and give you a bible and then they squeeze one charm that looks like an arrow they tell you to put it under your box you are not born again no sir see let me tell you anything that the lord jesus cannot bring in your life don't let anybody fool you that it will happen it may look like it's happening but you see because jesus said i am the door do you know what that means i am the legal access point to everything in the kingdom he never said i am the only one he said i am the door any other person can enter the house through windows but there is always a side effect you will not see it yet until the charm starts working so the charm will give you money and take your fertility are you getting the point now that's not the discussion with the herbalist he himself does not know the side effect because he's practicing so you collect the charm you start building the house but then you find out that you cannot give birth again or you give birth to 12 children and none of them become useful any other door listen there are many like this place now if we see you smuggling yourself through this window we know you are an arm robber you are a thief are we together there is a legitimate entrance don't tell me you are entering which way are you following jesus said i am the door i am the door 
don't tell me you are getting rich don't tell me you are getting blessed don't tell me you are increasing it matters to me whether you are following the door then i will know whether your success will have side effect on me let me tell you don't come close to anybody until you study the systems around his life and how he is doing what he is doing how she is doing what she is doing are we together now an encounter with jesus when you encounter jesus you will not only love him you will follow him you will not only love him you will serve him you will not only love him you will live for him you will not only love him you will influence others into that encounter with him has nothing to do with ministry has nothing to do with being a man of god it is the effect of an encounter when saul of tarsus in the book of acts had an encounter with the lord jesus christ it changed his life forever remember what's the name of that short man in the bible zacchaeus when zacchaeus had an encounter with jesus what happened it changed his life forever zacchaeus just come down i'm going to your house at once zacchaeus changed when he met the centurion it changed there were other people i believe that jesus met that were not recorded in the bible because you see the way they had a soft spot towards him one of them was joseph of arimathea i believe he was a great man and because he was caesar's friend you can liken it to being in the same political party so he would not be outspoken about jesus but secretly secretly he loved him have you had an encounter with jesus enough to fuel your life for a lifetime if the lifespan do you know it's a terrible thing when people love god on campus or love god before marriage i have seen many people who used to love god on campus you see them today they are hardly born again some were campus fellowship presidents some held crusades have you seen some of our parents you see them drinking beer and you say daddy do something about it say look i held crusade in benin i held crusade in abuja i did three days dry you see them giving you what is supposed to be a good accolade and they say i've tried everything so don't even bring this issue of man of god you are just starting before you were born we served god have you heard of ebenezer obey i was in his band have you heard of uh, so 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 and so i i sang there they carry the pain of their frustration and make it look as though it's serving god that brought that to them it's a terrible thing for someone to say i once was with god and now i've left him no sir he said ye who have continued with me not those who started ye who have continued with me lift your voice in one minute and say lord i'm with you forever i'm with you forever i'm with you forever mm. lift your voice and pray i need you to secure your place because some of us are already one leg in one leg out the pain of recession is about sweeping you Jesus, Jesus, how I trust you, how I prove the your Lord. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh for grace to, to trust. Lift your voice and say, Lord, what shall separate me from your love? Not famine. Uh -uh. not CGPA not recession I am with you and I am with you forever whether things work well or not whether ministry works well or not is a decision I have made lift your voice and pray any other person can make his decision any other person can say anything Lord I know that I may be angry if I don't succeed but leaving you is not part of the equation it's a salt covenant it's a fraternity with you in life and in death I pledge allegiance to the land with all my strength
effect of an encounter you will raise your children after your encounter don't tell me you are a Christian father are you hearing what I'm saying and you give birth to a child and then you don't care what the child is watching you don't care whether the child is going to church are we together many little children that's why I love our little ones in Koinonia you may think they are not understanding what we are teaching but it's entering their spirit we live in a society where parents they, they just their assignment is just to give birth to children they give them education they give them every other thing but Jesus are we together yeah you're going to church you leave the baby with a house help are we together you come back from church and you sit down other adults are watching certain things that may not be good for the child you don't care let me tell you if you have an, an encounter with Jesus everything you do whoever is under your roof will do it oh come on you stay under my roof as I'm blasting tongues I want to hear your own in your room in your room you are responding you, you don't stay under my roof I'm paying for your life and you are living your life then it means you are an adult enough if you stay under my roof you will serve Jesus I assure you please take what I'm saying seriously our society is depraved today because many parents went to church but they did not have encounter so they only gave us what was valuable to them which was education as good as it is they didn't give us Jesus some of us were on our way to destruction but God intercepted Ah, hallelujah you've heard me say it again and again when a lady brings a gentleman a lady brings a gentleman to her parents they don't ask whether he's born again and serious with God let me tell you in one minute I can know whether you are born again or not even if you wear suit ha, ha. this is a culture this is a culture are we together so we give our daughters to foolish men who are anti-kingdom we give our sons to wicked women who are anti-christ and we this this combination produces nonsense that's what is destroying our, our generation now what we are reaping is the carelessness of 30 years the carelessness of 40 years and if we do not correct it let me tell you the key is not insulting the government there must be a generation that is addicted and no nonsense about God imagine a man getting married with his wife two of them pray in tongues no problem two of them love God no problem as you give birth to your child before wicked men hold him you hold him as the father Shakata bakataya. you are prophesying what are you doing I'm prophesying oh stop that thing are you joking that's how I married in the first place I call you blessed you came out from my loins I prophesy you will everything is born after its kind I will not love God and give birth to an armed robber so you prophesy if I'm your father you should look like it I'm showing you what lack of an encounter has produced in our society to an extent to an extent that if you are godly they look at you as if something is wrong with your life you have to explain godliness something that should be institutionalized go outside of Zaria and see a young lady if a young lady likes a guy do you know how she attracts him she starts singing bad and nonsense song thinking that's what he likes are you getting the point now so you sing all of the songs thinking that by singing that the guy will be attracted brother shout no way Abba. Abba. after reading Proverbs 31 uh -uh. ladies you too shout no way don't bring shell and NMPC and deceive anybody do you have an encounter with Jesus listen don't just say I have an encounter with God God means anything do you have an encounter with Jesus the son of the living God let me prove to you that a man has an encounter with Jesus you are unashamed about submitting to his values if you have met Jesus then you must be ready to submit to his values don't come and meet me with your philosophy your ideology you have not met Jesus listen 
if you are here in koinonia if you are truly under this grace you should have submitted to our way of doing things so when you see somebody who is under this grace you know at once the way you talk the things you do your passion for god you can easily know someone who just came to koinonia for the first time sometimes people come to share testimonies here and once in a while they can be a bit unruly or a bit vulgar and i see the reaction in people it's like no 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 this is anti koinonia culture i can see it in you so why will you go out with somebody who just told you he's born again born again is like an id card you can see it is visible Kai, this 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 thing this thing is i'm speaking from my spirit some relationships should be cancelled yeah we cancel it in jesus name i'm not asking you you will see what will happen from the prophecy because some of you are insisting i cancel it in the name of jesus christ destroy your life in the name of love love is not stupidity are we together if you have had an encounter with jesus you must have the value system of the kingdom somebody comes to your house everything he's saying is nonsense every wrong word do you know there are words you don't even have to be born again societally speaking when you are getting to certain political positions they culture you when you when you are going to see the queen of england or they culture you you learn how to speak there are indices that show you have encountered god number one is your words not just dressing your words you speak nonsense you say anything anytime you have come on please please all kinds of selection in your phone there is the one for when you are high you, you just take it high then whenever you feel guilty when you listen to messages on rapture the coming of christ you just switch truly you have not encountered jesus don't laugh as i'm telling you this because it's a serious thing you are not going to bribe god into fulfilling destiny it has to be his way everybody say an encounter with jesus now lift your voice and pray and say lord anything trying to prove in my life that i've not had an encounter drive it drive it far drive it far drive it far some of you need to make some calls to certain people call that gentleman and tell him i love you but apostle just preached a message i can't marry you it can't work again sorry about the time i've wasted it can't work again it's as simple as that some of us who are about to get married some of us who have children it's time to get back bring the cross to your house bring christian values to your house don't live a life that is vulgar don't raise children that are wayward in discipline no sir no sir hallelujah listen listen you see these are the things that should be discussed in church i'm telling you this are we together yeah how many elders are not born again we just array the names of people when did this one join our church 1991 when did this one join our church 98 if we give this person and don't give this he'll be angry or well, let's give him something are you seeing that and then you now pick somebody just because he's old he's the elder in charge of marriage counseling you have never supervised what he's teaching the young people and they come around and he's teaching nonsense do you think all this idea of beating wife do you think people just invented it someone advised somebody and say i did it it worked do it it works let's return jesus to our lives so let's return jesus to our lives you know what i'm saying is not a lie give me you everything else can wait give me you i hope i'm not too late So please, if you are here today, at the end of the service, I'll make an altar call.
please i want you to examine your concept of born again if you have not submitted to the values of the kingdom you need jesus please let's not argue this thing this night you need jesus i don't care whether you are praying in tongues no sir are we together then your life then your home if my shirt has palm oil you spill palm oil and you come with a white shirt and hug me and i hold you there if you leave won't you see some stain something about, show me what implicates you and shows us you have met jesus don't just say you met jesus the bible says in the book of acts in the jerusalem council when they saw peter they saw these guys they knew they were timid but they knew they had been with jesus they saw them when they were timid but now they had seen them men of conviction let's sit down and continue an encounter with jesus number one number two now that we have cleared the way i want us to sit down and talk now because this second point that i want to bring is really where the anointing is this night so what you have even received now is an appetizer here comes the main course may you eat it every part of it in jesus name the second key the second key to fulfilling your destiny the second key to fulfilling your god-given destiny is the power of preparation and thoroughness write it down the power of preparation and thoroughness preparation thoroughness preparation thoroughness the power of preparation the power of thoroughness second chronicles 27 please verse 6 second chronicles 27 verse 6 second chronicles 27 i like us to read it is projected one to read so dotham became uh -huh, because he prepared his ways before the lord what was the secret of his exploits what was the secret of his might he prepared his way and he did that in the presence of god under his supervision preparation there is power in preparation write it down there is power in preparation we live in a time and a generation especially for we young people there is such an obsession for manifestation such an obsession for manifestation oh let me prove i'm a millionaire by age 20 let me prove i'm this and that let me prove there's nothing wrong with those things but preparation preparation there is such an appetite of bringing our future into our today to prove a point and we destroy ourselves because we lack that ingredient of preparation what do you do during preparation number one what do you do during preparation number one you learn and understand the principles of the kingdom i call them the mysteries of the kingdom that's what you do during times of preparation your times of preparation are largely times of learning and understanding the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom God has called me into an extraordinary ministry. God has told me I have an apostolic or a prophetic ministry. God has told me I'm going to the nations. Every time in my dream, I see myself changing people. Thank you, man of God. But what are you doing about it? Oh, I'm already buying suits. God has even shown me who my wife will be. That's not preparation. You are, that's carelessness. I assure you, you will not arrive that way. Preparation. This great ministry that God is giving me, what will it take? What do I know? Do I understand administration? Do I understand finances? This great ministry will be fueled by the word and by the anointing. Have I understood the mysteries? Listen, I want you to put your life on a project. Find out all the tools you will be using in the place of destiny and begin to source for them. Find out. 
there are many tools we need you need the anointing in the place of destiny have you discovered how to bring it and keep it in your life and multiply it in your life number two you need access to revelation the working knowledge of the word of god what keys do you have in your hand show me the keys you are accessing and i'll see whether you will get to your tomorrow finances our destinies are capital intensive so they require a lot of finances show me what mentorship show me what book you are reading oh apostle i'm doing business you will fail that's not the key the key is to receive knowledge the key is to change your mindset not to offer products and services yet that's the last step of the equation we love manifestation we love manifestation i receive text messages all the time and most of what people we, we, we like programs we like events conferences conventions someone sent me a text that he had a vision that we we're holding six conventions in koinonia every year i said shift that vision to the future it's certainly not happening now no convention for what what is the meaning of the word convention what is the meaning of the word conference we abuse these things because we do rituals without revelation are we together now now is the time for building please hear me now is not the time for buying suits now is the time for buying books now is the time for buying the experiences of people now is the time for buying the pain of people buy their experiences preparation I see many people who say they want to be men of God. I don't criticize them, but I'm just laughing. Because most people think all there is to ministry is to have the ability to throw somebody down. You are joking. If it was that easy, I guarantee you people would not be suffering. Benny Hinn came around Nigeria. And you see the number of desperate people. We all flocked in waiting to receive an anointing. What does that tell you? It's scarce. Genuine power is scarce make no mistakes about it do you know why many people do not rise we are comfortable with average average will only bring you in the scene but never distinguish you reward is for those who are distinguished not those who are present <laughs> is god speaking to someone there is power in preparation let me tell you when i started out in ministry I didn't do many of the things many people are doing in life no no that time ask a jimmy i used to walk with a bag remember my black bag it had bible it had my books the books the speakings of god to my life i would always walk with it those were the times you see people who buy tape or they go tape maybe pastor chris any other tape and they are small rechargeable they will raise all their money and buy rechargeable not not many of us seated here you do not have any device for hearing the word of god you don't but you have clothes you're a young lady of 19 20 you have clothes of a married woman of 35 it's not wise it's, it's a terrible it's an extended version of foolishness Are we together? You, you must take your destiny serious. This thing does not happen by magic. God is not a charm. He's not a genie. You've got to be serious. Some of us, as you keep your Bible like this, it's Friday that you pick it again. And yet you move around. I am, I, I, I hope to be called. Let's see which one. Uh, prophet, uh, apostle, I will use pastor. You are dreaming. <laughs> are we together? One gentleman sent me a text during miracle service that he was coming. I said, who are you? He says, a man of God somewhere. I said, that's all right, you are welcome. Then he sent me a text. He says, he's informing me so that they'll put a special reservation for him in front. I said, my brother, this front seat you see is a testimony. The front seat is not a wish. It's a testimony. This is a testimony. You, you come and sit down. The seat will reject you have you seen that kind of thing where people kings come and sit down they say somebody dies you don't sit down and sit unprepared sir no preparation 
I look at your prayer life and I know whether you are preparing. You want to be able to stand and preach? That's what kills a lot of men of God. They have not built that spiritual capacity. Don't you know that praying in tongues is like doing business? You are making an investment of strength into your future. A time will come, you will not have the time to do 10 hours every day again. I can't pray for 10 hours every day. I'll be an irresponsible man of God because there are things to do. But there were times I would stay morning till night. I was building strength. He said, eat for the journey is far. Brothers and sisters, some of you, now is the time to lock yourself. You may look stupid, but you are building an extraordinary ministry. You are already in prayer band two weeks. You say they don't know me. Please sit down, Jare, and, and work on your destiny. All this quest for recognition. Recognition. I think they should know me. No, sit down. Sit down. There is power in preparation. Let your competence announce you. Let the grace upon your life announce you. You cannot light a lamp and put it under a bushel. But you also cannot put a lamp that is not lit on top. All this quest for manifestation, please hear the voice of the Lord tonight. That's not the way to do it. That's not the way to do it. Someone asked me a question, I think, I don't know if it was a year or two ago, and said, Apostle, what are you doing with your life now? I told him, I said, I am preparing for an extraordinary life. He said, preparing? I said, exactly. Uh, you think this thing I'm doing is ministry? This is industrial attachment. My goodness. My goodness. My goodness. This is not close to what I've seen in the visions of the Lord. It doesn't even look like it. Compared to the koinonia God showed me, this is a, a cave. We are just waking up. Are you that inspired? Or have you started clapping for yourself and you want to build a camp around it? Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life. We don't need. I look to you for life. Let me come to your house and your room. Show me your library, and I see how serious you are with knowledge. Books are very important, they are a communication of your value for knowledge. When you buy a book, you are not buying paper, you are buying a man's pain. You are you are you are you are buying access to a man's testimony people's mistakes at a platter of gold for you to study and understand there are many people who don't read let me tell you how you know you are not preparing for your destiny is excessive idleness when i see a young man who is idle you must be lazy or you are not preparing do you know the urgency number one for most of us over 95 percent of us a mistake has already been made in our foundation i hope you know some of us got born again at 26 27 you are already behind at age 14 mary was giving birth to jesus you are 25 you are not born again you are already behind shadow why should you be roaming up and down in broad daylight you move around and you see people just taking sugar cane gisting and then they come to someone else's house how are you i was just strolling are you free and then they are offended when you say you are not free everybody say I'm going somewhere say it I'm going somewhere and now is the season of preparation I will prepare you want to be a millionaire let me see the preparation let me see the preparation Show me the character traits you are building that will qualify God to grant you access to such wealth. You want to be an extraordinary leader. Show me those you are receiving mentorship from. You are moving around, not doing anything. Ladies, hear me. Don't be under pressure. The next thing in your life after school is not just marriage. Thank God for marriage. But build yourself. Focus on preparation than manifestation. You are not qualified to receive anything you are not prepared for. Preparation. Preparation. Settle down, prepare. 
Lord, you said you are going to give me the nations. Work on my character. Let me become an exceptional man of God. Lord, at this small level of ministry, they are already criticizing me. I can imagine the criticisms on great men like Papa Oyedeko and Adeboye. Lord, build me. You have already told me that my ministry will have branches all over the nations of the earth. Can I survive the criticism that takes that, that having that kind of anointing will bring? Don't you know it's, it's, it's risky to be rich? Do you know the criticisms? Somebody will look at you and say, young people like this, they, they, they touch something. You are right. You are right. Nobody becomes rich just by doing nothing. They've criticized you small. Somebody just looked and said, I don't like Pastor Femi's shirt. And he's, he's angry. He's quarreling. He said, no, no, what is wrong with my shirt? Ah, and then you now want to be a leader over two million people you want to die ask moses moses the meekest man on earth he was angry and about to kill himself god said calm down that's how ministry is have you ever gone to god for prayer and god said no that's how it is so i hope you know that, that there is no breakthrough for this prayer is how it works hey, 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 hey. <laughs> yeah. A very interesting friend who wanted to organize crusade one time the guy was passionate about souls he was not passionate about finances so he wanted to organize crusade I, after the prayer fasting visions everything he didn't even start because there was nothing to start with he couldn't even start i told him i said well these are the logistics that are part of ministry And he was so disappointed and angry because in his mind I was the sponsor of that crusade. I said, no way. God did not give me any vision. I am not the ram and the scapegoat you had from God. Flog out your way of funding that vision. Brothers and sisters, preparation is powerful. When you go through, you read books and you see how a man of God will tell you 12 years in his life, nothing worked. And then you say that I'm four years. That means there's hope for me. That means it's not unusual. It's not like I don't have faith. Let's continue going. You study about a man who built his conglomerate. He will tell you he built 20 companies and they failed. He was the 21st one that is the one that is blessing you. And you say, I just built three and they failed. Ah, there's hope for me. You are learning. Preparation is giving you strength. A time will come, they look at you and they say, You claim to be a man of God's wife. Look at your husband, his mouth is looking dry. You are not feeding him. And you say, oh, but husband, am I not feeding you? You didn't prepare. Because if you prepared, you would have studied other men of God's wife and they would have told you this thing is normal. So as they are insulting you, you just say, Oh, so that's how it is. Your spirit has been prepared. Anything you cannot take now is because you are not preparing. You will see a man of God lying down and think the place is cold. You lie down there and the heat will burn you because your skin. You know what they used to do for masquerade? They said they used to cook them so that nothing will happen. Allow preparation cooking. So that while somebody is shouting now and saying, do you know apostle is a herbalist? Do you, I know the woman that gave him power. And then you come and tell me as a, as a concern. I say, apostle, I respect you. They are spoiling your name and then I laugh. <laughs> I would have cried in 2006 or 7 but now oh come on prophesy to yourself say myself grow up say it myself grow up there are many needless struggles we are going through because we are not prepared you are not the first to be criticized are we together you are not the first to go through challenges you are not the first to go through disappointment it's only because you have not studied others who had worse cases so you don't have a basis for comfort god is speaking to someone tonight preparation some of us are confused where we are now you don't know whether to start a church you don't know whether to start a prayer group you are not the first to start ministry go and examine the top 20 ministries how did they start there was a day it was in their mind did they start a church service bishop oyedeko did not want to start a church because at that time there were already too many churches based on him so your confusion about should i start a branch fellowship is because of your level and your thinking you are not the first to think like that 
when you learn that you will appreciate mentorship because you bring your mountain and somebody just walks on it and says, oh, I see this mountain, I remember 1981. Go and read the book. There is, there is a solution for that mountain. Oh man of God, our ministry is about to be thrown out now. We are owing 30 million. I said, just 30 million, I'm compl complaining. In 91, we we're owing 500 million. And then you now sit down. You are hearing a man talking to you and he says, look, let me tell you what to do. Pray, give a seed and go to bed. Nothing is as bad as it is. And then you conquer that. I remember when one time um, we held a little program and I was owing 30,000. 30,000. I was sweating. I didn't know what to do with my life. 30,000. It was from one book money somebody loaned us. It was so terrible. I remember the day it was even late Dr. Bimbo Dukoya's books when they brought her to Zaria 2005. After organizing the program now very nicely his presence in worship. Are we together now? There was no, I mean, the whole thing and they needed the money by 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock. By 7 o'clock, I'm not sure I had up to 500. I was sweating around. I didn't know what to do. So now you are owing 8,000 and you are moving around. My blood, I, I think I'm having high blood pressure. Calm down. Calm down. There is something preparation will teach you that you will stand up and walk. God is speaking to someone. It is comforting to see those who have gone through what you are going through times 10 find out what they did to come out preparation and Dotan became mighty unmovable let me tell you I have studied the life of men in ways you cannot imagine studying their life built great comfort in me many of them were 10 times as ignorant as I am now yet they were able to go through some things and I said no at this level I even know more there's no reason why I should fidget it will work You are not the first to get married. You are planning for marriage and you just say, ah, my budget is 1.5. Eh? Dr. Jelle, 1.5. You are seeing a man with two children. You will not ask questions. Sir, two children means you married. What happened? What did you do? You know, see, it's pride to think your problem is new to everybody. It's pride. What is a mountain to you is a valley to someone. You are not the first to have carryover. Hey, will I stay or will they drive me? Please go to bed. There are people who have taught this land you are seeing. Left, right and center. To a point that they just look at the board and say, glory be to God. Oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Fear is as a result of ignorance. And it's partly a product of not preparing. You have ignored the pain and the sacrifice of others. Somebody's pain you have ignored is why you are afraid today. Because if you buy their materials and study their lives, you will learn their pain. Koinonia was not built in a day. Many of you have never cared to ask the story behind it because you don't care. All you know is that you are enjoying there will be workers dinner. And it's free, paid for. Just dress well and come. I, say, I like Koinonia. I like a ministry that takes care of us like this. There was a story. There was a story behind it. Preparation. You learn the principles of the kingdom. Preparation. That's the time of trial and error. Please hear me. That's the time when you are, you are learning to handle the keys of the kingdom. Like a baby trying to hold a key and open a door. You will use wrong keys. You will use wrong keys. It's in the place of preparation. You will know how the anointing works. So God will keep building you. You will read the books. You will listen to the messages. Then one day you and God will go on small IT. Somebody will now say, please, Pastor Femi, can you just pray for our little group? And he say, ah, me? I mean, you are even calling me pastor. And then on that day you will pray. Some things will happen. Others will not happen. You will first go with confidence. You are fasted, dry. It's even dry. You went for the meeting. And then you go there. Before you start preaching, somebody is already shouting. And you're like, eh? That means this thing is easy. Then every other person you lay hands on now doesn't fall. And I said, what's the confusion? I didn't lay hands on anybody. Somebody was shouting. The ones I now in direct contact with the anointing. So, preparation. You now go back. In one message you are hearing, you will hear a mystery 
that explains that operation say, ah this is what i did wrong you have learned you are learning you are learning are we together you are learning about finances god told you you'll be a multi-millionaire ceo all that you've held home and abroad in your entire life is hundred thousand and you are working one day god will give you it somebody will just send you four hundred thousand and say please can you keep it for me for two weeks and you find out your body is shaking you can't sleep you will get up you are moving up and down you say ah, should i touch this money and pay back quickly you see a revelation that you are not qualified you are beginning to see the effect of money then you learn from that preparation that money is a spirit it's not just notes it can do something to you and you are now thinking 200,000 is in my account and I cannot sleep. What will happen if 200 million is in my account? Then you begin to respect every man who you see sitting down. He's a millionaire but he's drinking a bottle of water. It took discipline to conquer that. What are you, what are you ignoring by refusing preparation? Is God speaking to someone? You are preparing. You want to be a good wife. In the process of preparation, you will read a book and see that a man of God's wife, she will now say, God told me. When God told me, my husband did not yet know. And God was sending me to women to go and cook with them. And you say, ah, the Holy Spirit will tell you now, go and do likewise. You will now say, ah, Auntie Shade, please, can I come to your house just to help you? And while you are washing place, you are asking her questions. And she's answering, what happens when a great man is angry? As a good wife, how do you treat, if your husband is a public figure, how do you shield him? You are not learning. You are only saying this brother, God has been speaking. You are not seeing me. You will never see you. Because God is not a wicked God to carry his servant laboring and just give you. No. You prepare. You prepare. Say amen. Stop claiming things carelessly. Sit down and prepare. And before you know it, you will see them in your hands. I respect people who are mighty yet understand the power of preparation. There are people you see in this koinonia, mighty men and women in the spirit. Very mighty. You just see them quiet. Some of them have had one-on-one -on -one encounter with them. They are prayer life fire. Their word life fire. The maturity and wisdom upon their life is uncommon. Nobody even knows them. They are quiet. God is preparing them. One day you just see God will carry one brother and give them and say, ah, where is this one coming from? Are you joking? Nobody comes from nowhere. People are preparing quietly. You are the only one standing where pe prepared people are standing, but you are not prepared. I receive grace to prepare. Lift your voice and pray. I receive grace. Lord, I see how I've been shortchanging myself. I've been acting like I've arrived. I've been trying to look rich. I've been trying to look anointed. By this teaching tonight, oh God, I receive grace. Grace, koinonia, pray. I stop complaining about what is not working. I value the pain of those who have gone ahead of me. And I make up my mind to draw from them. Shakata baratakaya. Leke prons kebariata lakoto supahaya. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. A pastor sent me a text and the pastor was really complaining. He said, man of God, God is increasing us in ministry. But right now I just discovered every other thing in my life has died. My prayer life has died. My word life has died. I still see miracles. I still see great things. But I'm so disorganized. I used to be an organized person. And I told him, I said, you are still using the mindset you, you were using when you were starting ministry. Are we together? Do you know what it means for a very busy person to still maintain his prayer life? There is a technique. It's not just as the spirit leads. There is a system. How do you maintain a prayer life? Reading chapters of the Bible. When from morning till night you are walking. How do you balance that? As an influential person. You are married with two, three children. How do you maintain your spiritual life? How do you maintain a good fatherhood? And a, a good husband? You are not the first to go through it. Find out. There are people who are flawlessly effective. Find out. There are men of God who preach five, six messages every week. And everything is new. You want, you are already tired. 
your little fellowship in one state somewhere maybe just two or three branches and it's already killing you yet people like dr paul and running six services every sunday two services every week intermittently they can travel to europe and come back in the morning find out there is a system there is a system otherwise it will kill you john g lake did not understand that he did well in ministry and died in his family life what is the secret of men of god who are effective in family their schedules are packed full everything i remember when we started i didn't know that there was a protocol department that handled ministrations and made things easy i used to handle them by myself you bring your letter you come and give me i look at it i say okay let me go and pray about it at a point there were several letters i said yes to many people I'll say yes I'm coming to your church yes I'm coming to your fellowship I will not even remember I found out that I had to prepare four five messages in a week it was weighing me down I said it's not like I don't have what to say but I can't stand before God's people and preach what I know God is not leading me to say I can preach any nice sermon but will it be effective are we together what do you not know I'm drawing you to a point your pain today is because you have ignored preparation somewhere then i began to study i got bishop oedeko's books towards excellence in life and ministry i got that word that Hayward mills book church administration and management i got some of the villagers books pastoring without tears i got some of these materials and sat down when i began to study i said ah so this is how it works i've been killing myself for no reason are we together killing myself for no reason i remember when i had to be under pressure to answer everybody's call it was like i'm a receptionist somebody will call and say is this apostle i just want to know and for five minutes you are arguing with the person is this apostle if it's not apostle please don't waste my time and it's my credit too. i'm now calling i say it's apostle say, apostle please do you have time because what i'm about to tell you is is boiling in my spirit and i will now carry my big head and say yes i have time and for 30 minutes while you are talking another text is entering another call and i find out that sometimes you can stay three hours you are just answering call and you are fagged out you are fatigued someone who finishes work he will work well have a nice time with his wife go to church and come back then call you that's when you now want to rest then others started calling by one or two because they found out that i don't sleep in the night they will now call and say apostle sorry you they just go ahead i used to feel so guilty if i'm sleeping and my phone is ringing i feel so bad until i read a man of god's book that delivered me now it can ring if it's an emergency call the police yeah People would threaten me and say man of God pride pride you've not gotten anywhere you used to respond to us before you even used to send us recharge card but now you are you are getting arrogant I will feel so bad I'll say but God please search my heart until I found out that that's how people are it's not like they are just becoming it for me they are like that everywhere I just said ah please go to bed ah somebody's already gaining wisdom gaining wisdom so when you walk out of here and you see what she's wearing you say why does everybody hate me no you are not the only one it's like that you are just discovering it you are just discovering it i don't know why everybody talks about me everybody is there something wrong ah if if you are looking at your legs you will cut two of your legs because there are too many people who can talk ah god is giving us wisdom preparation 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 there are some of us married people people come to your house you are under pressure to cook for them and give them everything because let, let them not say we are not good let them say who oh. let them say because you will find lousy people they'll come to your house is there pepper soup in this house you will think they are joking they really mean it you will rush go to the market buy, buy cow you think it's just a joke you are not learning to grow up you need to listen to people who have learned to manage people like that Two o'clock they'll come again they'll say sorry oh we are here again is there still something for us then you will read a book 
that one determined young man one day walked up to them and said please visitor we have we have a program in this house there are times we have bible study there are times i'm just spending time with my wife there are times we are spending time with the children it is important to let us know you are coming man said what is there what do you think you are leave him let him go carry his trouble and go at least you are free now there is something you need to know to set you free most of this depression we are having is because there's something you don't know so you sit down there and think people are talking about you what will they be saying about me what would they say do well they will talk don't do well they will talk so be used to it and enjoy your life you see what preparation does for you so you create a system of joy that is independent of the things around you and you become a motivated leader and everybody looks at you and says wow this guy is a leader worthy of emulation then your ministry increases because you have learned how to motivate people into excellence say amen you have to learn the principles of the kingdom very quickly there are four areas still under the second point there are four areas that you must work on four areas that you must work on number one you must contend for a comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom generally as regards understanding the word of God and applying it understanding the word of God and applying it you must contend for that mystery you must know how to apply scripture to your life if you want to be great use your times of preparation to learn how to make the word of God work number two you must contend for the secret to the anointing in your place of preparation you must find out you cannot um, it has nothing to do with ministry you want to be great in life without knowing how the anointing comes you are joking so in your place of preparation you have to find out this anointing that has been responsible for the greatness of many how does it come number three you must find out principles of leadership and administration I know you are a man of God but you are going to have leaders I know you are a businessman but it will not always be popcorn forever a day will come you have companies with offices you must understand principles of leadership and administration number three you must understand finances you must in your place of preparation you must study finances no matter how much of a man of God you are a businessman a father you must this is a tool I'm mentioning for you the tools that you will use to fulfill destiny you need it study on finances don't just be a money monger don't just be a hustler don't just be obsessed about money and business understand the system understand how this thing works understand the challenges the vicissitudes that surround it are we together number four the last thing you must understand is people and relationships people and relationships brothers and sisters if you don't understand people and relationships you will die like a chicken they asked bishop Oyedeko years ago they said what's the greatest source of challenge and pain in your life he said people they said what's the greatest motivation in your life he said people do you know the reason for many discouragement is people what they have said the reason for your encouragement the same people you must understand people get my message understanding people mastering relationships and then the prophetic implication of association you have to learn that i got a book years ago that changed my life how to win friends and influence people by dale kennedy right it blessed me it opened my eyes to the psychology of human relationships it helped me understand people thoroughly to know how to relate with different kinds of people you need this in your life otherwise you will get a job and after two weeks you are angry with everybody because you will meet sarcastic people even as a man of God you are going to meet people in your church people who are very disloyal to you you need to learn what to do with them you are going to meet people who are very anointed but rebellious you are going to meet people who are very submissive but careless and less as fair all these people you have to work with them you get a job you are going to work with lazy people you are going to work with very cunning people 
people who are corny, they will bribe and kill you if need be for promotion. You've got to understand the ethics of working with people. Maintaining relationships. Number three. The last point. Action. The last key to opening up your prophetic destiny is action. The power of action. So number one is an encounter with Jesus. Number two is the power of preparation. Number three is action. The power of sustained action. Now by action, I don't just mean movement. Action means the relevant steps that you take. Action takes courage. Write it down. When you are about to take action over your life, your business, your ministry, it takes courage to act. Brothers and sisters, there are things you are going to be doing in your life, you will be the first person to do it in your entire family. It takes, action. It takes courage. Joshua chapter 1, it said, Be strong and of good courage. Nobody has ever gone to school in your family. You are the first to do it. There is fear. I was, I was talking with, I can't remember who I was talking with now. We're discussing the subject of fear. And I told him there are two dimensions of fear. There is fear as a result of the presence of the spirit of fear. There is fear as a result of stepping into the unknown. You must distinguish them. Are we together now? There is the fear as, it is, as the presence of a demon spirit. You cast that one out. God has not given us that spirit of fear. But every time you are doing something new or something extraordinary, that, that ability to push through something that is new will bring fear. It's not unusual. There are many of us here who have gone through certain sustained seasons of preparation. But action, action. Are we together? You are the first person in your house to get a job. And for many months, you have not submitted an application because you are used to everything being done free for you. Are we together? You've not submitted any application. And the Lord is telling you, stand up and go to Benin and submit your application. Say, ah, God, no, 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 no. Who is going to pay my money? Where am I going to stay? You have to summon courage to get up and take bold steps in life. Are we together? Courage. Courage. Action requires persistence. There are certain times your first step will be the wrong one. But it doesn't mean you are wrong. The step may be wrong. But you are not wrong. Start the business. Start the church. Start the ministry. Action requires courage. Action requires persistence. There is an ugly ideology in the church that the moment people start things and fail, people rally around them. Are you sure it's God? And they destroy people's destinies. How many great businesses would have stood but for the advices from churches? How many great destinies? There are people who, who, left, who left certain precious jobs that God gave them simply because of an advice. If they are shouting at you like that, is it worth it? And then you leave it and now you are suffering. Are we together? Number three, action requires a system. Now, this is very important. You don't just act carelessly. You act based on a system. You build a system. You build a system around your action. For instance, when it's now time for you, God has called you and God has anointed you and told you it's time. You now sit down. There, there is a system. You can start a prayer group, a prayer fellowship. As God is bringing people, they are getting healed. They are getting blessed. God is lifting you. God is bringing people into your life. Most of the people God is bringing are not your members. Stop calling them your members and sons and daughters. They are your leaders in the making. Are we together? God never sends members. He sends leaders. They will come as drunkards. They will come as troublemakers. Your assignment is to prove your apostleship. Make them become what you have seen in the vision. They will not come ready-made. Action. You must build a system around it. We had a system like that when he and I was starting. We will get people born again. There was a system. You got filled with the Holy Spirit and then we were praying. 
and so when people got born again in one week they were already on fire a system around your business you may now say okay let me now build a system i separate business money from my personal finances maybe i open an account for business i need to be serious now not that any money that comes is for the eating you don't know which one is for your shop which one is for you so you eat everything and then you calculate and say somebody is stealing somewhere no no so i remember hundred thousand enter why is there sixty thousand you ate it it's your account system all the great empires in the world all the great destinies that you see the uncommon lives in ministry in politics in influence in any area of life were built this way this is the way people become great they have an encounter with jesus that encounter brings them to a submission to his values and the next thing they they plant themselves under a ministry or a platform or a spiritual family are, are you getting the progression now this so that when you get people born again you know what to do with them when people have an encounter with jesus the next assignment is to create a structure or plant them under the bible says they that be planted in the house of god they shall flourish in the courts of our god he said in old age they shall be fat and flourishing hallelujah just like you are seated now now you are hearing this you are taking steps based on what i'm teaching you will go back now and because there is an anointing upon what i'm saying you will not ignore it as you go back it will burn like fire in your spirit you will begin to make decisions that are consistent with it are we together now and you begin to see your life rise you begin to see yourself improve then you can know that I'm going to be a good man not just because I think I am good I have studied the system that makes men good then I know I'm going to be a blessed man not just because I hate poverty I've studied the system I know I'm going to be extraordinarily anointed not just because I'm, I want to gyrate myself no, 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 no I've understood the system at that point you can look at life and smile it's called mastery you can rise to a point where you look at life and smile and know that I have a great destiny I have a great destiny and you look at your life after 20 30 years and it's nothing short of a life of glorious impact on eagle's wings a book written by bishop david Oedipo, i think to celebrate the 30 years anniversary of living faith then or so i looked at everything the progression on how he started and i said this is it consistent i have studied many great men of god that's how they started Benny Hinn, Dr. Mike Mudok, Miles Munro, all the great men that represent great mentors and fathers in my life. I look at their lives and I see consistently, consistently. There were times in their lives they were for many years. It's like things did not happen. Even living faith with the kind of speed that it is experiencing now, there was a time it was stagnated so you find out because at this point your ministry is not moving so you go back what did they do oh they fasted they prayed they met together as leaders they readjusted certain things fine papa there was a time redeemed was doing well but it was taunted and god told him that redeem needed to get to all the nations but as it were redeem could not cross certain cultures it could not go beyond the south and he went to the lord and then the lord gave him a formula he gave him a secret let him know that when you are dealing with global leadership you must have respect for people's culture and ideology it's quite selfish to want people to completely bend to subscribe to your culture kingdom culture yes but your your sociological culture and paradigm it may not be possible with every place and so he opened up and painfully created that flexibility so you can see one redeemed branch that looks like a contemporary um, uh, um, church and all of that and then you see another redeemed branch youthful another redeemed branch still you know holding on to certain values he just focused on the core values that represented the foundation of the ministry to preserve it but then gave the flexibility and now redeemed is everywhere festival of life in uk is as if i mean you see them everywhere there france everywhere redeemed because of that secret 
you can now look at that why is my church not growing ah and god opens your eyes through that light and you now see it oh the reason why my church is not growing is because um i i i hold on to my values but probably i i impose every value both spiritual cultural sociological on people and that value is restraining people that may be just the key you need to adjust and then all of a sudden you find out that your ministry becomes a habitable place for people action action god is challenging some of us to take action you need to take action over your finances you need to take action there are different action steps you can take you can begin to read books every day you can listen to messages every day you can get up and subscribe to direct mentorship as much as god grants you grace you may need to settle down tell yourself i'm starting that business next month i'm starting it i have prepared i have paid my price i am starting it i will start it or you can say this month of november is dedicated to scattering my cvs around i will anoint it i will pray i brought it for miracle service they have prayed for it now god is waiting on me i will scatter it all around hallelujah action we are enjoying koinonia today because of the power of action we are enjoying what god has done today because of the power of action listen when will the generations tied to your grace reap the benefits of the action you are taking or otherwise whether or not you move time is moving whether or not you move time is moving it is important to move with it time is premium the only way to redeem it is to use it well you don't save time you use it well you redeem it by investing properly in it koinonia i bring you a word today there is a prophetic destiny for you in Christ. You have been escorting men. Some of you, after tonight, you've got to sit down. Brothers, look at me. After tonight, some of you, when you go back home, don't sleep. You need to carry a chair and sit down outside and just carry a clean sheet of paper and say, what am I doing with my life? This is not the way it's supposed to work. You have been joking around your destiny. You are getting old. Things are not working. There is nothing working in your life. Finances, you don't know anything about it. Fatherhood, you don't know anything about it. That sense of maturity, leadership, you've not built anything. Time is going. You have to give yourself a sense of urgency. A day will come, God will demand accountability for the grace and the life and the power and the strength that he has given you he said i must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day for the night cometh it's time for you to begin to study the bible it's time for you to begin to study the bible you want to become a great man of god you don't know the bible you're going to crash land you will be tired your members will be weary they will leave your church and go somewhere else simply because you do not have the word you are not instant in season He tapped Elijah and said, Eat for the journey is far. I want to round up. Are you preparing? Are you preparing for your life? Sister, are you looking for a man or are you preparing for marriage? Brother, do you want to marry by fire, by force, or are you preparing? Marriage means a wife, marriage means children, marriage means the troubles that can come from in laws. Have you positioned your spirit to manage it? Marriage means leadership. I want to start a business. CEO. CEO of what? Have you studied it? I want to become a great man of God. I want to be president and founder or geo. All that one is stories. Uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. Are we together? Listen. I made a decision years ago. Today now makes it, um, not today, but 2016 makes it uh, 14 years. 14 years when I made a quality intentional decision. Now, I'd been working with God. I'd been doing certain things, but when I made up my mind to do what I'm teaching you now, 14 years ago, so when you see this today 
is a product of 14 years of consistency with the Holy Ghost. There were many other things that had happened before that time. But I made up my mind. I said from today, I will not be irresponsible. From today. I started studying and making a decision over my finances and my journey 12 years ago. Two years after I started my journey with purpose, I started my journey with finances. Listen, not every time is conducive for everything. You must redeem the time. You hear me saying this thing, redeem the time. Please don't let anybody just come to your house and come and waste your time with gisting and gossiping that does not make sense. Early in the morning, you are supposed to be praying. Six o'clock, they are in your house because you stay in the same compound. Bros, how you day? Then please, please, what, what is that shout? Please, I'm happy. Today is a glorious day. Take it easy. Bros, you don't cook. You don't do this. Just speaking, tell him, please, I plan to be a leader. Take it easy. All these your vulgar statements and the rest, I appreciate you, but take it easy. Don't come to my house and come and do everything you want to do. No. Action. You begin to dress well. You begin to be serious about your life. Are we together now? Yeah. Actions that reflect your destiny. You stop excessively spending money anyhow. These are action steps that some of you need to take. Make up your mind that from today, no fake life. I'm not ashamed. If all I can take is Gary now, I'm not going to say others are taking rice. Uh -uh. By God's grace, I will take Gary honorably. Any lady that cannot like me taking Gary now does not deserve to eat my rice with me. I will continue moving. No pressure. No pressure. God has given me two members. I will guard them jealously and teach them with all my heart and love them. No competition. Are we together now? I open an account. I'm saving. I am disciplined. Can't be a student and you are buying with one of 10,000, 15,000. It's not wise. You are destroying your future. That 15,000 can buy you a book. 15 plus one secret to a happy home. I think something like that. Uh, uh, Dr. Mrs. Nature, 500 naira, 1,000. You change your life. Are we together? God blesses you with 10,000 naira. You go and buy materials and dress well dress well. You don't look irresponsible. Please, I'm challenging us. We are going to pray, but I need to be sincere with you. You look well. You dress smart. You start learning certain ethics. When you are going before the presence of a great man, you don't look foolish. You destroy yourself. Now you begin to learn that not every opportunity opens every time. There are some of you here, brothers, you don't have one good suit. One good suit. You can budget for it one good suit so that the day God opens a door you have something nice you keep wearing all these rags that people wear around looking like fools and then you smile around it no you will never be great that way are we together you come to a point in your life where you begin to act responsibly when you see ladies you respect them you don't talk like a fool speak everything and no 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 no, no. you act like you are preparing to get married there are some of you, I see you, you are still acting like children, although you are matured. You begin to act responsibly. You see someone's child falling down, you create a sense of responsibility. Oh, let me help this person. You are taking action that is opening doors for you. You see a man that is anointed, you don't just stand. Let's see what he's saying. Pastor Alpha, what does he even have to say? No. The law of honor. See, there is a way you look at someone, you know he has grown up. You know he has grown up. Are we together? Let's take steps for our destiny. You may not like what I'm teaching you tonight, but just like others who are saying thank you now, you will say thank you tomorrow. I guarantee you. You may not like me for what I'm teaching you now because for some of you, I'm challenging you. Listen, there are some of you, especially ladies, because you are very beautiful. Your beauty makes it such that anybody who comes around you likes you. So there's nobody to really tell you the truth. My name is Joshua Selman. I'm telling you, you have to settle down and be serious with your life. You cannot float around a destiny full of flattery. Somebody has got to tell you this is wrong, this is right. The person who challenges you is the person who loves you. 
God is using me to do for us now what some of us did not get at home. And I will do it well. You may not, if you like, don't hate me, no problem. But you will thank me tomorrow. I love you too much to leave you the way you are. Stop all this childish play. Stop all these this irresponsible things people do around. Gossiping around, misbehaving. Some of you, are, you have already collected phone on credit. Go and return it. You don't need that kind of lifestyle. Oh, please, hey, Jimmy, uh, can I use your trouser for two weeks? No, you are, you are acting like a child. Can I use your shirt? I like your phone. Can you borrow me? I'm traveling somewhere. All these things are attitudes of children. When I was a child, I thought like a child. I acted like a child. I spoke like a child. Now that I'm a man, what do I do? I lay aside these childish things. Have you laid aside these childish things? Or are you just growing old? Maturity. Let me come into your room or your house or whatever and see it nice. I look at you and I see how careful you are. I don't come into your house and I see your fridge spoiled, your TV spoiled, your table dirty, your carpet dirty. And I just see you say, ah, apostle, you are welcome. May his presence. No, no, no. You are not showing responsibility. That's the same way you'll be an irresponsible man. The fridge will spoil. You say my wife will fix it. You are not already assuming responsibility. God cannot give you a great ministry. You can't fix your fridge of 1,000 naira. You want to fix lives? No, sir. Are we together? You wear clothes that are torn and dirty. You don't care? No, sir. You have to behave well. Say in the name of Jesus. From today, I make up my mind that I will fulfill destiny. Say it again from today. I make up my mind that I will fulfill destiny. Give me two more minutes and then we'll pray. How about bad friends? I can't round up without talking about that. Show me your association and I show you your true values. Show me your association. Whether you went to the same primary school, secondary school, he was your chief, um, 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 your, your best man, whatever. <laughs> Sam is laughing because I want to say chief bridesmaid. Praise God. All this solidarity to wrong friends, you've got to make up your mind. You see, I've been saying this thing. Do you know some of us, if only you can leave your bad friends, your journey to a good life starts. Especially for us ladies. Especially for us ladies. You love God. But the moment you meet them, they come with their wrong ideologies. And then they force you to have to believe it. You just came back from church. And now you are making up your mind, I will be responsible. And someone goes, hey, this day, oh, ladies, can I sit down? You know that's what you just repented of. But because of the presence of that friend, you say, Todd, just tell me. And you now keep listening. Before you know it, you go back to your vomit again. May God deliver you this night the courage to let people know you are serious about your destiny see i don't know what is it this our ego thing is what we have refused to take out of the way if i tell this person sorry you are interrupting my destiny they will feel bad they will criticize me so what so what make up your mind are we together make up your mind this night in the name of the lord jesus christ make up your mind and say things will change I pray that you will really change in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that you will really change in the name of Jesus Christ. There are many other things we need to change about. Some of you have up to 20 relationships. Consciously, you don't care. To you, it's a symbol that you are a fine girl. Say, do you know all these guys are dying? I guarantee you, none of them will marry you. For you to be that careless with your life, they will ask you out. But when they are ready to marry, they will come to church. The brother will repent and dress well and come and look for a quiet lady who loves God. Every man, stupid or sensible, wants peace in his house. Are we together? Yeah. So some of us pride ourselves. There are good brothers coming. They love God. They fear God. They are coming. But you are there busy doing your emotional razzmatazz with all kinds of people. You are growing old. 
God will open doors for the brothers. The brothers you see today that cannot buy a good shoe, they will buy what will open your mouth tomorrow. And by that time, they will not be ready to marry you. They will marry people younger than you. Don't be angry. I'm sorry I'm saying this, but I'm challenging you. And brothers, don't think what I've said now is a license for you to be foolish. Because some of you deserve no almost forever until you do something with your life. Please, don't, don't ever use what I'm saying now as an endorsement to come and harass any lady. If you don't merit saying any no, um, they will bring you to me. You are going to meet me somewhere in the equation. I will meet and I will tell you, no, no, you are not, you are not responsible enough. It's as simple as that. She may not have the courage to tell you, but I guarantee you I will tell you. You know why I'm doing this to you tonight? I came with this spirit of fatherhood tonight because I, I want to challenge you. You're on your way to better days. You're on your way to better days. Every marriage you see here, by God's grace, some of our people here who are gloriously married, there were steps they took. Some of the things you are seeing here, the lives that are successful in ministry. By God's grace, you belong to a ministry that God has helped. These are the things that we do. They are not what we are saying. They are things that we do. He said, that which you have seen me do among many witnesses, do also. Do also. Be serious with your life. I can count the number of times you will come to my place and find me sleeping. Sleeping, snoring. Any time of the day. I'm awake doing something. There are sermons to prepare. There are videos to watch. I am, I am so passionate about eradicating my ignorance. So passionate. Please rise up on your feet. You're on your way to paradise. Three prayer points. Please, no moving around. We're going to pray. This is part of the meeting. I want you to pair yourselves into two and let's just take five minutes to really pray. If you are married, please, you can hold your wife or husband, whatever, and pray because this is a serious prayer we are going to pray now. Lift your voice and begin to pray in the spirit in one minute. in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will lo I come in the volume of the book pray in the spirit hallelujah hallelujah Prayer point number one. Lord, I vow, I make a covenant with my destiny. A covenant of seriousness and purposelessness. From today, I make up my mind to be serious and to be purposeful. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Young and old. Male and female. Those following online. I enter a covenant. With my destiny, I must fulfill destiny. From tonight, I decree and declare in the name of the Lord Jesus. No more joking. No more playing games with my life. Hallelujah. Please make sure you pray. Those outside, make sure you pray. Something is happening. Prayer point number two. You are going to pray and say, Lord, every knowledge I need 
every light I need to prepare me for an extraordinary life please reveal it to me lift your voice and pray the information I need access to light are you praying take away ignorance financial ignorance ministerial ignorance leadership ignorance take it away from my life spiritual ignorance I bring it to the cross and I decree and declare that there is supernatural grace to work it out to work it out to work it out prayer point number three prayer point number three oh God the spirit of laziness and inertia that spirit that refuses me from being diligent I curse it right now in Jesus name open your mouth and pray I challenge laziness spiritual laziness mental laziness physical laziness wanting something for nothing I curse that spirit grace to be diligent to be valuable grace to invest in myself hallelujah hallelujah two more prayer points father destroy premature the appetite for premature manifestation manifestation when I'm not ready destroy that appetite from my life lift your voice and pray pray premature manifestation in business premature manifestation in ministry premature manifestation in family life premature manifestation in leadership I receive grace I receive grace. I receive grace to prepare like Jotham. I prepare my ways before the Lord. And so I work strong and mighty. Grace for preparation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point before I pray for you. The courage, the discipline, and the diligence to take necessary action. Because some of you, the season you are in now is the season of action. You can't prepare forever. You've got to step. That spirit of fear, that lack of courage, what will people say? I'd like you to lift your voice and destroy it right now. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, it's time to take action over my finances. It's time to take action over family life. It's time to take action in ministry. The action that will move me over my career, over my job. It's time to take action. please lift your hands let me pray for you I want to pray for you sincerely from my heart I want you to believe it God sees my heart whom I serve and God knows that my greatest desire listen my greatest desire I have always frowned at the leadership paradigm that makes one person a superstar shining while the rest are helplessly everybody can shine it will not kill the honor of the leader if you are a true leader, even in the greatness of the people you have raised, they will honor you and give you your place. There are many leaders who are not passionate. I made a vow with God when I started ministry. When Koinonia started, I've shared it with you. I will never pastor people who are not influential. 
I believe you can be anointed. You can be spirit filled. You can be responsible. You can be financially free. You can be influential and useful in the kingdom. You do not have to choose one area. You can choose everything. You don't have to choose prayer and the word and neglect responsibility. You don't have to choose excellence and responsibility and neglect the ministry of the spirit. All of them are supposed to be complementary. So all these teachings that you see, I bring them, some of the teachings are hard, but they are designed to file our lives into action. The Bible says, iron sharpeneth iron. Are we together now? So as you receive this word, don't sit down arguing it. Don't be offended by it if it strikes you. The idea is to receive it into your spirit as the word from God. And know that this is coming from a leader that is passionate about your success. If I see you today excelling and doing great things for the kingdom, it's my fulfillment. You give me money today, I'm blessed, but I mean, what do I do with that one? But if I see your life transformed, you are a great man of God doing mighty things for the kingdom. That's my source of joy. My paradigm is not outshining people and having people struggling around. And then one superstar called Joshua Selman. My desire is to be the least even among everybody rising. It still will not destroy my worth. Lift your hands. In the name that is above all names, I pray for you. The grace that God supplied in my life that granted me the discipline to prepare. I am still preparing. But the discipline to have started that journey regardless of the challenges. I pray for you. May that grace come upon your life. The spirit of indiscipline and carelessness I declare that it lives your life this night and forever. Some of you, the spirit of slumber and gluttony, food and sleep that is robbing your destiny, be free from it this night. Some of you, inferiority complex, the, the pressure to look successful, the pressure to belong, is making you to do a lot of things. You've done too many foolish things. The change comes for you now. Some of us, the pressure of association. I want to become like my friends, my contemporaries. That, that pressure to, to fit in a group that is destroying you. I command that pressure to leave you right now. For some of you, the embarrassment to start again. The embarrassment to start again. After life has whipped you, your business may have failed. Your ministry may have failed. Your career may have failed. You, are, um, you applied for a job. You try to ask a lady out. The, the, the courage in the name of Jesus. I declare that grace for you again. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. May you begin to access deeper levels of revelation. May God lead you to the books. May God lead you to the messages. May God lead you to the conferences. Where your anointing and your wisdom is waiting for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever you do not know now that is responsible for your fears responsible for your concerns I pray that the light of God's word will swallow it right now the grace to go back to your drawing board the unashamedness to carry those books you used to write in that you have thrown away those dreams you used to write in some of you had books God used to speak to you every night but just because of little results you threw them may you go back and get those books again The culture, listen, the healthy spiritual culture you observe that brought you this far, I release grace for you to continue it. Some of you, the prayer life that brought you this far, you have left it now. The word study life, the humility that brought you this far, you have left it. The sense of honor for authority that brought you this far, you have left it. Please, whatever you have left, 
that you should not leave i command get back to it in the name of jesus i speak over your life what has not been done in your family the limitations that they have put and say this family cannot cross this i prophesy to you you are the one who will cross that barrier in the name of jesus and i speak finally to everyone here who is discouraged drop your hands down i'm speaking to you there are people here who are discouraged as an apostle i have tried things are not working as i'm standing right now i don't even know the name of what i'm doing with my life nothing is working finances zero marriage zero school zero work zero nothing is working i feel as if i should just die I bring you a word from the Lord. He said, is there hope for a tree? Right? Even if it be cut off. He said, there is hope for it at the scent of water. The water of the word of God that you are hearing tonight, may hope come alive. I release upon you the courage. Some of you have thrown the button. I want you to take it back and say, no, I will make it. I will make it. Like an Olympic person who has been handed over the battle and now you left it the problem is if you leave it all the other people who gave it to you will also be failures because of you so you have to finish it grace to finish well in the name of jesus christ now very quickly before we round up please keep standing everybody no moving around there are people here you've heard the word that i've said please keep standing everybody there are people here you have heard the word of the lord and while I was teaching, listen please, the Holy Ghost began to speak to you and said, Apostle is talking about you. You need to make your ways right with Jesus. Two groups in one. Some of you have actually made a decision for Jesus at one point in your life, but there is complete spiritual unseriousness and lukewarmness. Based on my definition here, you see that you are not born again. You may have come to recite a prayer, but sincerely you have not submitted to the values of the kingdom. And then there are those who have never truly made a confession for Jesus. You've been around Christian things. But as you began to hear me teach, the Spirit of God told you this is it. This is where I've been trying to lead you. You are a great man. You are a great woman. This is where I've been trying to lead you. I'm going to give you a few minutes. Our time is up. And wherever you are, there are many people outside. I believe many people inside and thousands following us online. The beginning of your journey to destiny starts with an encounter with Jesus. I want you to please walk out here. Don't waste our time. No sitting and thinking about it. I want you to walk and come here and say, man of God, pray for me. I want to start all over again. God bless you. God bless you. Keep coming. God bless you. I know you heard the word. I know the Holy Ghost spoke to you. Rebels don't run away from him. Rebels don't come to him. Sorry. They run away from him. Keep coming. No cajoling. No cajoling. Jesus is calling you. Those outside were waiting for you. Don't say we came with a family. They are seeing me. Tonight is nobody's business. Those online, you may not be able to walk and come here, but I guarantee you, you can open up your heart. You are about to make a decision for Jesus. He said, if you are ashamed of me before men, I will be ashamed of you before my father. I still believe there are more people. I still believe there are more people outside. There are still more people who need to make up their minds and say, Jesus, I come to you genuinely. I'm tired of faking it. I mean business with you. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, brothers and sisters. Look at me. That I'm leading you to make this decision does not mean I'm better than you in any way. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. It is a genuine decision that will begin your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Do not be ashamed. Listen, I'm serious with what I'm saying. There are still two people outside. The Holy Spirit is telling me they have to come out here. Come out. Come and join them now. Come and join them. There are still two people outside. The Holy Spirit is speaking to me. There are two people outside, 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 outside. The Holy Ghost, please don't waste our time. God is speaking to me. There are two people outside that you should come and join. I'm just giving you the word. Whether or not you come is up to you and God. But the Lord is telling me there are two people that he has spoken to them. Come and join them quickly, quickly. Now, those of you in front, listen. God bless you for your courage. Hallelujah. Listen. God does not condemn. Men condemn. Religious systems condemn. 
but in koinonia the first of our core value is love i don't care what you have done i don't care how bad it has been god can give you a new beginning are you hearing what i'm saying but make sure that your coming out here is not an emotional decision the grace and the strength of god is available for you but you must make up your mind lift your right hand to heaven jesus is here watching you take away joshua selman from your mind and see jesus the lord of your life giving you a new beginning right now say after me seriously and sincerely say jesus i have come to you the only one who can help me this night i hand over my life to you i've tried managing it by myself and it has not worked tonight i hand over my life to you be my savior say it be my lord i receive eternal life into my spirit and i declare that from today i open up my heart for change i open up my heart for transformation i declare that i'm a child of god i am born again the things i used to do i do them no more the grace of god is at work in me keep your hands lifted father these ones have come sincerely from their heart some of them are crying they have come before you the fountain of life some of them are giving their hearts to jesus for the first time some of them have heard me speak and they are making a genuine decision lord i stretch my hands towards them i decree and declare that the power of sin the power of the flesh the power of darkness is broken over their life they have exercised their will may your spirit find expression in their lives in the name of jesus christ from today grace for you to live a victorious life in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah, 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 yeah. in this house a finger that has taken us from January till December we acknowledge you oh God you are the mighty God we give you all the praise we give you all the praise we give you all the praise hallelujah hallelujah praise the Lord I'd like you to walk around just celebrate someone and come back to your seat walk around greet someone hug someone tell them it's good to see you at the last service for the year hallelujah praise the lord i'd like us to celebrate jesus for the last service the very very last service all the kids the last service for the year hallelujah god bless you i welcome everyone uh i'll not be preaching tonight really i think the worship team and the media have done everything we give them kudos for everything i just want to encourage us tonight i was contemplating on what i would share just to 
encourage us you would call it a valedictory sermon for the year and the lord laid just one word in my heart and i think it's important that um, we close on this note for the year we have seen the hand of god he told us that this would be for us as a family the year of the rain and we have seen his faithfulness you cannot imagine the things that god has done around the nation we give him all the praise just one scripture matthew 11 Matthew 11 Blessed be the name of the Lord Twenty-eight, Matthew 11 the 28th verse Come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden Let's read on together. And I will give you rest. It says, Take my yoke upon you and lean of me. For I am meek and lonely in heart. And ye shall find rest for your souls. It said, For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I want to admonish us tonight very briefly on the subject of peace. Um, is one attribute that is grossly lacking in the world today when you put on your television all you hear is very bad negative news this person bombing this nation this person doing this when you come to our own nation all kinds of stories and um if we do not learn how a believer is supposed to live especially in our world today we will depress ourselves we will destroy ourselves are we together now our hospitals are full of people who have inflicted themselves with needless diseases the rate high blood pressure used to be a disease for old people but right now you find teenagers in the hospital with high blood pressure stroke and all kinds of things the turbulence of living in today's world is catching up with so many people depression swallowing people up there are so many people who beginning from the first of this month probably will not rest until the first of january they are hoping to get the money to buy the cow for christmas the rice some of you are depressing yourself over your transport <coughs> excuse me your transport fare back home and all kinds of things listen let me tell you something peace is one of the cardinal representations of the presence of the kingdom the bible says the kingdom of god is not in meat and drink are we together but in what righteousness peace this peace is not just a state of quietness it's a state of rest that's what jesus said he will give he said come unto me and i will give you rest it's from the word shalom it's not just a a state of non-disturbance it's, it's a state of rest the psalmist put it in a very beautiful way he says um he restores my soul he says he leads me beside the still waters the more of a leader you become the more you will see the need for peace in your life and the need to be an advocate of that peace lord make us instruments of your peace where there is a faith, let your love increase. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Walk 
walls of pride and prejudice shall see when we are your instruments the first revelation I want to give you about peace and a state of rest is that it is a choice peace has nothing to do with what is happening around you listen listen peace has nothing to do with the external environment there are so many people who tell you i don't have peace because i don't have money how can i have peace i don't have peace because i'm not married i don't have peace because there's no admission i don't have peace because i have a carryover or no job or no child um satan understands that men are carnally minded are we together he knows that the impulses of the carnal man is based on the things around him and so he takes advantage of the happenings in our lives all right and then brings us to a point where we cannot enjoy this shalom this restfulness there are so many people worried. You see young people just sit like this. And you ask them what they say, life. And you are wondering what is making that person so depressed. What is life? The only set of people we believe should have peace are those who die. That's why we tell them rest in, not in joy, not in love. Because we have informed ourselves that peace is only for dead people once you are alive in this world we have programmed ourselves to believe that it is strange for a man to be a peaceful person peace is not quietness peace is not lack of noise no peace is a state of rest a settled state of rest that is based on the revelation of who god is and the integrity of his person hallelujah believe me you have mastered the art of living if you sustain a technology in the spirit to generate peace regardless of situations and circumstances at that point you are guaranteed to live long everyone say peace one of the greatest blessings that jesus brings to us is peace not just salvation but peace you can have all the money in the world and with it will come multiply troubles there are people who were more peaceful poor than they are now millionaires but cannot sleep are we together now have you not read what solomon said he said here the conclusion of the matter he said of reading many books there is no end and much study is a weariness to the soul. He said, but this is the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. Then he says, this is the whole duty of man. It's too much in this life to disturb your peace. Every 24 hour in your life is full of enough trouble to jeopardize your life. You don't have to be a bad person. The world we live in from the person who greets you in the morning to the one you quarrel with before sleeping there are so many people who cannot sleep you ask them why they say kai but i'm, I'm a lenient person abi they are treating me too much in this life this is what they are thinking about there are ideologies that have robbed us of the peace of god the Bible says that peace surpasses all understanding. It's not scientific. You don't calculate it. It's part of the true representations of a spiritual man. A spiritual man has sustained a system in the spirit to be peaceful. A state of rest. God, the way people worry, the way people depress themselves is a dangerous thing. God gave me this word that in this season it's important for us to come once again into this covenant of peace. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. Nothing that is an emergency enough to rob you 
of that joy and that restfulness that comes in knowing who Christ is. Hallelujah. Our world is full of worry. Everybody say worry. Jesus dedicated a whole chapter, Matthew chapter 6, talking about worry. The Bible says, do not worry. Listen, do you know why people lose their peace? What to eat? What to wear? Are we together? And all the mundane cares of life. From marriage, to children, to money, to lack of it, to too much of it, to human beings. There's too much to rob us of our peace. Husbands have lost relationships with their wives because of the cares of this world. Lack of peace. Many homes today have become habitations of worry and stress. The tension that you see in the life of people is too much. But there is a system. There is a technology in the spirit that can keep a man restful. May that be your experience. Listen, I'm telling you, if you are not a man and a woman of peace, you are not walking in the experience of the kingdom. It has nothing to do with whether you have money in your pocket or not. Many of us have tied our peace to Naira and Kobo. So when you check and you find 100,000 when Pastor Femi gave the testimony of the millions coming, I saw the relief. It's not your money, but just the, the fact that money is available gave a lot of us that sigh of relief. And I felt very disappointed. If you allow money to define your peace or otherwise, you make yourself a slave to Satan. How many people smile only at the end of the month? Have you seen the way people are happy when they are slotting their ATM? Even if there's nothing, just the consciousness that I'm around money. It's a very demonic thing. Listen, listen. This is the last teaching for the year. It's a very demonic way to live. You cannot tie your peace to anything in time because it will kill you fast. Your peace must be tied to a person, not things. Your peace must be tied to a person. His name is Jesus. Oh, I like Job. Come on. The Bible tells us that Job, when everything, whether he had it or not, of course he was human, but the Bible lets us know that Job, the, the Bible says he sinned not with his mouth. When you check your CGPA and you see that everything works out fine, then you have peace. Look, look at how worry is killing so many people. It's one of Satan's greatest arsenal in our day. Worry, anxiety, depression. Hear what Jesus said. John 14. John 14. Are you getting blessed tonight? John 14. Verse 27. John 14, 27. Can we read it? One, two, read. Not a bank account. Listen. Peace. I live with you. So that you are not confused. Not peace that comes from money. He said, my peace. There is a type that God gives. There is a type that the world gives. The peace you get when you receive salary. The peace you get when your insecurities are gone. People consult witches and wizards today because of lack of confidence in God. Insecurity has depressed men. Insecurity causes lack of peace. He said, my peace I give to you. It says, not as the world give it. That means there is a kind of peace you get in this world. Peace that is tied to things. Are we together now? And so there's depression. Everywhere. You come and you find out that there's no light. Oh, never. Eh? And you are angry. And the devil says, that's right. I have found out that circumstances can control the peace gauge of this person. And somebody just annoys you. 
you receive a very very nasty text from somebody and while you are meditating upon it you hear that ah mama is sick at home and you sit down and say kai what is this life about and satan says this is it this is exactly the state i want because every time righteousness peace and joy cohabit the kingdom must find expression there and so satan knows that every time i can take one of these factors away it's impossible for that person to experience the kingdom do you not know that with all your depression five minutes without your breath and there's nothing to talk about again truly human beings are really foolish the word of god gives us wisdom you find out the way we depress ourselves over several things I once met a gentleman and I saw him so worried. I said, why? He said, at my age, my father had a car. Hi! And so, <laughs> and so I told him, I said, so what does that mean? He said, can you imagine? Ah. I can't make myself a slave like that. Even if I'm going to think, let me think of something noble constructed metals stopping you from sleeping in the night is that not idolatry are we together now think of the things that depress us brothers and sisters and you find out that at the root of them do you know that most of the things that are free in life they are the most important things the things that God knows that money cannot buy, he gave you freely. The air you breathe, the blessings of relationships, the gift of salvation. Most of the things we depress ourselves about, the truth is we can live without them. We have chosen based on an ideology to pressure ourselves. Look at the lovely sister that came to share about her phone getting bad. How many people will not sleep today? if arm robbers take well not arm, arm robbers don't steal phone I'm, that a thief anybody just carries your phone this gets missing and you see them moving around where is my phone they wake up by two they wake up by three they go to zaria city i must find out who did this peace jesus said my peace i live with you koinonia not as the world gives you frustrate satan when you have found a system that does not disrupt your peace you have found a system that maintains your rest hallelujah when satan sees that nothing in time can affect this state of restfulness we hate because we do not have the peace of god we depress ourselves we are sick sick and sick and sick people going to the hospital the doctors cannot find anything because they are depressing themselves you you are so depressed you fall down and not even know you're falling down somebody says stand up and you say you mean i fell down what were you thinking about at what age i refuse to allow anything in time it's a choice i reject it i refuse to allow anything in time corrupt that restful state it's a state i've found that is only possible in christ a state of rest you will never know this peace if you are outside of christ there is a revelation that brings you to this peace let me tell you what that revelation is if god does not open a door it cannot be opened ah. And if God opens that door, it cannot be closed. I have learned by experience that worry does not solve anything. It only complicates your life and your problems. How many ladies, you see them 25, depressed. Why? Husband, what is that? You are so passionate and depressed over your husband. The day he comes, you are even annoyed that he has come. Do you know there is a way you can worry over something? it does not bless you even when it comes the worry is too much even the miracle you no longer celebrate it jesus said my peace i live with you 
Give it to us again, media. My peace. John 14, 27. My peace. There is a kind that he gives. He says, not as the world gives. Let not your heart be what? What is the opposite of peace? A troubled heart. He said, let not your heart, in other words, permit it not. Choose to refuse your heart from being troubled. He said, neither let it be afraid. These are the things that choke the peace of God. Fear. Fear. The fear of the future. How many young people are afraid of the future? What will my life become? You are afraid of getting admission. You are now afraid of graduating. You are afraid of getting a job. You are afraid of not getting one. Ah! He leads me and guides me to the city of Papa. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. Me and guides me to the city of Papa. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. Anxiety is something that is, is okay with the natural man, it's part of our build up as natural men. The Bible says, Be anxious for nothing. Anxiety, right anxiety anxiety has depressed people it is that lack of peace anxiousness anxious about everything oh i want to know what tomorrow holds i want to know what this holds and we we go into all kinds of ungodly strategies because we are afraid how many parents have gone to make sacrifices for their children tell me what the future of my child will be will he be great will he not be great tell me this and they say okay go and bring a cow go and bring a ram i want to know i'm afraid let me know if tell me if i will live up to 10 years Abba. there is a state of restfulness that when you wake up in the morning you give him all the praise and you say thank you lord for peace you hear news that is depressing and you say lord in all things I cannot explain what has happened but Lord I thank you I, I may not know the details but one thing I know is that you are faithful you are faithful for the things you've done for me tirido, do, do, tirido, for the life you've given me you draw me close to you much anxiety in our world we are afraid we are insecure right we are troubled over nothing watch students when result is about to come out something that will be pasted and you will know anxiety makes people to be roaming around they see a lecturer and they are good afternoon sir did i pass just be patient something that in the next 10 minutes will be pasted there and will be left there anxiety do you know anxiety can preempt you and open up seasons that was not supposed to be open anxiety can make you do things you can go ahead of your destiny to your detriment the peace of god that surpasses all understanding and people look at you if you are a man of peace you must be strange because people look at you and say ah is it not you they said your father died and you say well i cried 
but to him be all the glory. He said, no, no, no. Let's go and find out. We must trace the root of this. And he said, God is faithful. You are rejoicing and they tell you one million naira has entered your account. You say, I rejoice, but it doesn't make any difference. I am still restful. And God says, so the one million. You say, well, I'm happy. It doesn't change anything. And the devil says, where in the world do I get this person? How come you have a constant state of rest regardless of what happens? You are in a relationship with a guy. You are happy planning your wedding and he looks and says, I'm not doing it. And while you cry, you say, Lord, you are faithful. I may not have him, but I have you. Give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, listen many of us do not know the value and the, the treasure of having jesus christ i know we we profess it we claim we know but the truth is it's not in our lives the our our unrestfulness shows jesus there is something that is higher than him in our life listen if i give you one million sam right let me use money so that we understand. If I give you one million, Sam, and you see five naira falling on the ground, will you leave the one million to pick it? If you leave the one million to pick it, what does that mean? It's impossible for you to say, I value this. That's what, that's what is responsible for the turbulence in our lives. You have the greatest gift and you throw him away and you are looking at other things that are mundane because in your mind although we claim through our songs that he is everything but the truth of the matter is that our passion and obsession about things of a lesser value show that they are out they are truly the gods in our life when a man has jesus christ listen please hear me i know we live in a society that Things, what I'm saying is old school when a man has the Christ and the revelation of the operation of the kingdom you have the greatest gift in your life brothers and sisters whether in plenty or in little you are a man of peace how many gentlemen are about to be bad fathers because their joy and their peace is tied to things around the moment the man is promoted everybody receives the joy the moment he fights with somebody in the office everybody is going to receive a share of that anger that's a bad life i don't have enemies in my life believe me i cannot hate a man i know this sounds arrogant it's not the natural Joshua Selman, I'm human, but I cannot. That quality is no longer in me. The light of God has consumed me. I found a key. Love never fails. When was the last time they taught you this? When they were teaching you on an antidote against failure? Did they ever teach you that love never... What does never mean? There is no possibility. Hmm. Love. So I live a very restful life. If I go back and I find my place born to ashes, I will look at it and say, wow. The only pain is I will say I did not carry my books where I write the visions in my life. But in five minutes I'm rejoicing. Satan has lost the art of wearing me. I, I humiliate him with my peace. Hmm. Are we together? I can sit down with a cup of gari and rejoice the same way I will sit down with Toki. I can sit down in a five-star hotel and rejoice the same way I will sit down in a mat. If that is not your case, you are already in deception. The devil is about to hack your life into pieces. I will never... No, 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 no. Whether I'm, what, I'm wearing a watch of 100,000 or wearing a rubber watch... Or 50 naira 
it does not make any difference as far as peace is concerned are we together whether you are wearing a shirt of one million or you are wearing a shirt of ten naira it doesn't make any difference never allow the things around you to define your state of rest you are not a christian you are not a true christian i'm telling you this when that happens i have found life i have found peace i'm not teaching you to be irresponsible but i am telling you you must start living when you learn to be peaceful that nothing in time can disrupt that restfulness whether in tears or in joy, whether in plenty or in little, you have learned to maintain a spiritual equilibrium. There is a, there is a, a spiritual buffer. Nothing will take you out of that state. You are a true spiritual man. Some of us are probably seated right now, depressed. I want to travel tomorrow. God knows I need 2,000. What I have is 500 because of one five you will not sleep and your not sleeping will not bring it you see the trouble worry was never designed to bring solutions it was designed to depress you if i don't trust myself why can't i trust if you don't trust yourself trust god my peace i move up brothers and sisters i am amazed every 24 hours i watch people and i am shocked as they are at their ideology why do people think this way why can't they be peaceful why won't you choose to be peaceful listen some of you look at you're not even so old but look look at the way your life is depressed worry and anger and hatred always cynical always on the negative side talking about everything that is not working in your life and the life of people why don't you change what you see why don't you change what you see i don't see negative things all i see is the faithfulness of god in my life all i see is the mercy of god he is the goodness of god in my life God has been good to me. If he never blesses me in this life, he does not owe me anything. I owe him my life and eternity. That's how to live. That's how to live. You kept 10,000 naira, I got missing. You are crying. You are yelling. You are quoting scripture. The prayers you would not have prayed to bring you into intimacy. You pray for two hours. And you start checking, oh God, your word said, even God who called the dead and called the things that be not as though they were. Lord, me, I'm saying this thing is my own. It must come. I'm telling you, it's not the prayer of faith. It's the prayer of selfishness and idolatry. The greatest gift I have in my life, listen, is not the anointing. The greatest gift I have in my life is not money. The greatest gift I have in my life is not people. The greatest gift I have in my life is the presence of Jesus. Ah! In life and in death. The worst that can happen to me is that I will die. You will cry for seven days and say, ah, ah he taught us about long life. It doesn't matter. I'm God. <laughs> and at the end of it, Many of us are already on our way to produce bad families because of depression. What is wrong? No money. How can I be happy? Are you not seeing what is happening in Nigeria? Buhari's government is this and that and that. How is it providing for your needs? Have you not read, my God shall supply? Leave that one, Jare. We are talking about real issues now. You are not a Christian. A true believer. Listen. A true believer is one who has staked his life on God's word. I believe the word of God to death, to death, to death. I believe the word of God. My life revolves around it. I will never allow anything in this life to depress me. It does not have that ability. No. 
if I'm told today that any of my loved one is dead, God forbid, I will cry. But in it, I will get up. And the only song that will come out of my lips is the song of his faithfulness. Faithful are you, Lord. Faithful are you, Lord. Faithful are you, Lord. Faith. We are saying faithful are you, Lord. Faithful are you, Lord. Listen, create a limit for the effect of the things in this life as far as your relationship with God is concerned. The presence of Jesus is more than gold. It's more than a billion dollars. The presence of Jesus is more than koinonia. It's more, I will give up koinonia 1,000 times for the presence of Jesus. I will give up anything and I mean it in this life. I would give, give aside every accomplishment and everything for the presence of Jesus. That's the gift I have. I, you hear people say, ah, my reputation is at stake. I don't even have one. Ah, I don't have one. I'm telling you, my reputation is his reputation. I'm too young to kill myself with that kind of ideology. I have no reputation. Me, sir. Thank you. I want you to get a revelation tonight, inside and outside. As we wrap up this year, make a choice that for the rest of my God given life, I choose peace. I choice. No matter what happens in my life, I made that choice. I choose to be happy. People see you and say, You are always laughing. Then they come to your house and find out that the only thing there is water there's no Gary and they say so why are you laughing what's the laughter for the laughter is because you have come into oneness with one who is greater than anything that can come see let me tell you please please lose the, the affection you have for things you hear me say this all the time. You must get to a point in your life, Koinonia, where nothing in time has the ability to steal away the presence of Jesus. When John, or no, not John now, when Peter was about to die, they were about to kill the body, right? They put him on a cross and he said, no, they cannot crucify me the same way they crucified my Savior. Look at the man. He said, turn me upside down. I am not worthy to be crucified that way. What did these people know? That in the midst of their depression, Paul will write a letter encouraging people and Paul will say, I'm in chains. In chains. A man in chains telling people, count it all joy, my brethren. When you go through diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith walk in patience. In chains. You are not in chains. Yet we are depressed. Please, I want you to, I want you to weary Satan with your passion for Jesus Christ. Weary Satan with your passion for the things of God. Oh, I wanted to give you 10,000. I no longer will give you. Say, to God be the glory. And he said, what kind of person are you? Is it that you don't get angry? You have sustained a system. For as long as God is alive, I remain peaceful. My depression will start the day someone can dethrone him. And then at that point, I know that my life is no longer secure. Listen, the oldest man on earth today it's not up to 120 years. So what is the vanity? Are we together? The vanity in this life that makes us to get up. You are pursuing car. You are pursuing jeep. 
you are pursuing this you are pursuing that oh they said in the village i'm not successful let me prove to them who cares are they successful they in the village are they successful They said they don't marry fast in our family that's their cup of tea frankly speaking see learn learn to learn to ignore satan is one way to conquer him ignore his proposals and you will step into a state of rest someone looks and says have you gotten the admission say why now ah say god is faithful i know that he makes all things beautiful in his time they say oh forget that you know you are disappointing us and you you leave them away and when you go, the devil will say, think on these things. And you say, no. The Bible says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are noble, if there be a good report, if there be any praise, he said, think on these things. This unemployment, why are we like this? And then you turn to your friend and say, why are we suffering like this? The friends say, Ataya, oh, Nassau, Nigeria, they know. You are, you are thinking like a non-Christian. The peace of God. See, let me tell you what will happen if you are living in peace. Men must hate you. Because, you see, there is a popular saying that misery likes company. When people are frustrated, they try to look for those who are like them. So that they can form a team. We, the committee of humiliated people. And the moment you refuse it, they interpret it as pride. What are you saying? Are you not older than us? At least me, I'm 28. You, you are 32. You are not depressed. You are not joining us in this. Thing. I'm, I'm not joining. I'm not a party to all of this. Five years after graduating, no job. You won't come. Let's discuss this thing. Say, no, I'm not a party to all of this. Are you willing to be that different? To ignore the mockery and maintain the peace of the kingdom? There's too much depression in our world. And I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. The person who is depressed, humanly speaking, does not even have any guarantee whether he will wake up the next day. Yet he's thinking. People have accident under the... Me. Thank you. Depression makes them to begin to hallucinate. They think the road is this way, whereas it's this way. They go and bash into a tree and die. See, I, I thought I saw the bend this way. Frustration. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. Jesus. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. I remember a man whose car had accident. When he came and saw the car burning, he fell down there and died. If that guy gets to heaven and I'm Jesus, this is the first thing I'm going to do. I'll say, what brought you here? And he said, I died. I said, of what? He said, car. I would say, go back. He must go back. For that, you must win at least a thousand souls. <laughs> oh, no, come on. You don't die and enter the gates of heaven. If I'm Jesus, you must go back and win souls. One by one, not general. One by one. You die because your car caught fire they stole your clothes from january you are still remembering it now see listen do you let me tell you something anything you hold on to you are telling god this is the limit of my life don't ever lift me beyond this limit because at this point this has become my god I love him you never hear me pray all those nonsense prayers oh god why me why all of these things why eh? oh god won't you won't you no, no 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 i'm a lover of your presence i'm a lover of your presence i'm a 
I'm a lover of the past Jesus I'm a lover of your presence I'm a lover of your presence anxiety and this rage right have you seen friends do this I, I believe you don't do it um, Christians should not do that but there are friends that do that um, they deliberately look for trouble they keep saying things and instigating anger and then they laugh there are people who if they laugh at you there is a way they laugh at you do, do you have such kind of people in your life oh my goodness they laugh at you in a way that you, you, don't, you, 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 you try to check, is it that I'm stupid? Am I a clown? What is the meaning of all this? If you live your life like that, there are many of those kinds of people around the world. You will hate yourself and you will translate that hatred to every other person around you. I love myself, God knows. I love myself. I've, I've said it again and again here. That philosophy of hanging yourself even if i were not born again it would never happen to hang myself no i'd rather die in a sleep but not to hang myself who buys the rope <laughs> me go to the market and buy a rope to hang myself <laughs> say i choose to be peaceful shout it i choose to be peaceful I make, I make up my mind to be a person of peace. Go home with this mindset and see how you will discomfort a lot of people. Because for some of you, they are waiting for you. There is a part of the gist that has been. It's like a pie. They left it for you. They are hoping that you come. And they say, come and tell us your version of the suffering in Nigeria. And they say, well, I... I have just one thing to say God is faithful and they say please please let's be real we're also Christian he said this is my reality I mean it I'm, I'm not playing games and then they get angry right people always get angry when you don't conform I once met a woman who was angry said that she's been barren for a number of years and um, this was woman. She said, I went to the hospital. They said I'm okay. They said I'm okay. It's my husband that knows what A and B and C and, and you know I don't want to. He has this whole medical this in and all of that. He's the one. Blah 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 blah. From his father's side. From this and that. And I knew that this woman will not carry a child for a long time with this bad attitude. There, the kingdom cannot come because there is no peace. It's an equation. There must be righteousness. There must be peace and there must be joy. When these three cohabit. It grants access. It's like a spiritual code. Hallelujah. And I looked at the woman and I said, Madam, the issue is not to throw blames and say it's your husband. Two have become one. That's what the Bible says. If he gets money now, will you say it's his money or will you say it's our money? See that? And I encouraged her and prayed with her. I give unto you. I don't know what you are going through right now. But let me tell you, I don't want to know. One thing I know is that your way out must be the way of peace. Depression will never bring you solution. Are we together? Worry and discussing issues with people who cannot help you will not bring you out. Jesus said, John 14, please, 27, My peace I give to you my peace i give unto you the bible says one of the names you will be called is the prince of peace not the prince of worry look at jesus on the cross going through the pains of the nail and then he looks at john and says john behold your mother mother behold your son what kind of peace is that a 33 year old man naked on the cross he would have been angry. Look at Stephen. When they were about to stone him. He looked into heaven. The only guy that did what Jesus did. Was advocating forgiveness for the people. That's a state of peace. 
May God make you a man and a woman of peace. I'm telling you. In plenty, it does not change you. In not plenty, it does not change you. Right? When people annoy you, and instead of you boiling around, you just find a song of melody. In moments like this, I sing out a song. I sing out a love song to Jesus in moments like this I sing out a song I sing out a song to the Lord singing I love you Lord singing I love you are going to be going home let me tell you what some of you will meet in your house poverty like never before it's not a prophecy some of you that's that's the truth you will go home and they will tell you they've not paid workers for months and then you can choose to join them in the depression or be an instrument of peace and say look i know that things are not going on right now but i tell you a day will come when we will rejoice in this house they say where is that day we are talking of now, now. Some of you, the moment your parents see you, they will be angry because they are thinking of school fees. And you tell them, no, God is faithful. Right? Some of us are going back to our loved ones. And we may not have anything much in our hands to go and bless them at home and we are depressed. It should never be so. You choose peace never allow satan depress you the lord put this in my heart to share with us tonight i'm going to prophesy and bless us for the year but i want everyone here those listening outside let nothing be so serious in this life such as to disrupt your peace there is a childlikeness you must have if you want to live into this world some of us are too matured for god to use us we are too we are too bossy we are too old we are not childlike enough i choose to be a child before his presence i will be a child with my children and my grandchildren i will still remain a child in his presence to tremble at his word nothing is too serious in life to depress me nothing is too serious in life to make me hate people and get depressed all around no joy no peace no i teach you the art of living i teach you the way winners live the key is to hand over everything to god i'm rounding up i know you think you are born again but let me tell you when worry still kills you you are not truly born again there is a part of you that has not been surrendered to him. From beginning to the end, it will always be, always be you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. You gave him your joy. You gave him your spiritual life. You gave him your prayer life. But your financial life you left away from him and that's where the devil is using to kill you because you've not handed it over we are going to do a handover ceremony where you will take every aspect of your life and say god i'm tired if he's based at me i would deep, this marriage issue will kill me this job issue will kill me this barrenness is i hand it over listen he said come on to me all ye that are what weary and heavy laden what did he say i will give you rest do you have it do you have that rest koinonia do you have that rest today if you have it it will tell in your life if you have it it will tell in your lack of desperation for mundane things 
Oh, when will this come? Oh, when will this? No, 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 no. I can't wait for tomorrow. I can wait. I can wait. There is no hurry about it. I can, I can wait for tomorrow to come. Ah, no. I can't wait for tomorrow. I just can't wait. Why? Why? The only thing I cannot wait for is anything that has to do with the kingdom. Every time I get up on Fridays when I'm around, I, I almost cannot wait for evening because I want to be able to bless the people. Any other thing that is not direct, so winning. No, I can't be that desperate about it. I can wait. Can you wait for the car to come? Answer me. Some of you can't wait. Can you wait for the car to come? Can you wait for the husband to come? Can you wait for the wife to come? Can you wait for the promotion to come? All the days of my appointed time, I will until my change comes. If you force a door to open that God did not open, it will open, but it will open and kill you. Oh, I choose to wait. I choose to wait. The Bible says he makes all things beautiful, not in your time, in his time. He has the clock, right? And if you will wait for him, he will beautify your life. Some of you cannot wait to get into ministry. That's why you will die like a chicken. The first person you prayed for, they beat you and say, don't come around our house again because God is saying, wait. He said, no, my blood is hot. Calm down. Calm down. I choose to wait. I choose to experience that peace. There are three prayer points we are going to pray desperately tonight and then I'll prophesy over our lives and we'll be done. This is the message that I want us to close coin on help with. The first prayer point is a prayer point of handover. Let me explain it and then we'll pray. That you get to a point, come, where you take your life and donate it to God. Lord, I'm tired of this trouble. He said, my yoke is easy. The one you are carrying is not easy that means it's not of god my yoke is easy and my burden is light will you hand it over to god and say lord i'm tired of depressing myself this is my conviction i am a complete servant of god if my reputation goes bad he's the one to receive it if god honors me he's still the one to receive it are we together if i lack food to eat and I don't have the energy, no soul winning, no salvation. Who pays the price? If there's food to eat, I make God responsible for my life. I play my own part of the deal. And I don't, I never dapple into his part. It's God's part. Lord, I leave it to you. I have done my own part of faithfulness. I know you are, you are too faithful. And then you rest. We are going to hand over you know let me tell you how to know the area you've not handed over to god the one you think about all the time the one you are obsessed about and you are almost dying about god is not yet lord of that area are we are we ready to pray rise up on your feet everyone please i want everybody to pray pray seriously hallelujah Lift your voice and cry. Mention the areas in your life that cause you sorrow and depression and say, Lord, I hand it over to you. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. I hand it over to you, oh God. I'm tired of killing myself. I'm tired of dying slowly. It all belongs to you. Oh, 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 it all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. Oh, 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 oh. it all belongs to you. Oh, it all belongs. 
voice and begin to pray father I lay aside every financial worry pray I lay aside every worry about job I lay aside every worry about children every worry about ministry I choose peace I choose peace I reject worry. I choose peace. Oh, you make me lie down in green pastures. You lead me beside the still waters. Kabarakato shekete lebo, embrokoto poske shekete, shekete lekoto stope shekete, embro. Make sure you're praying. You are the Prince of Peace. And I've received you in my life. I receive your peace. I receive your peace. In this wicked world, I receive your peace. Hallelujah. Listen, the Bible says, casting all your cares upon him. For what? He cares. That's the second prayer point. Listen, don't think God does not know that life is full of troubles. Are we together? He's called the ancient of days. Don't think he's not aware of your challenges. But he still, he still tells you, my peace I give to you. The second prayer point is you are going to lay aside every trouble. Bring it before him and say, Lord, this is what is disturbing me. This is that which is troubling me. I, I bring it to your throne. Lift your voice and pray. I bring it before your throne. Oh, I bring it before your throne. I exchange my burden for your body I exchange my yoke for your yoke your yoke is easy your burden is light Lord that which I have been carrying is killing me Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point, listen. The last prayer point is a cry from your heart. You're going to cry and say, Lord, I lose affection for anything that is not you. I, I can use them, but they will never win my heart. Lift your voice and pray. I lose affection for money. I lose affection. Pray. Pray. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm awake. I lose affection. Money will never depress me. Pray. I lose affection. That loss for material things, that loss for fame, that loss for power, that loss for accomplishment, I lose it. I break away from it. I break away from it. 
I break away from it. I break away from it. I break away from it. Everything I've held on to. The last prayer point. Let's add one more. Cause the spirit of depression, worry, anxiety. It is of the devil. Open your mouth and curse it. Open your mouth and curse it. I reject you in my life. I reject you in my family. I reject you in the name of Jesus I reject worry I reject anxiety I reject depression in the name of Jesus reject it reject it from your destiny my God is faithful my God is faithful I refuse depression Nigeria will not make me depressed the government will not make me depressed the economy will not make me depressed. The happenings around my life cannot make me depressed. I reject depression. God is faithful. My God is alive. Savior, He can move the mountain. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus, sing Savior. gentlemen say after me in the name of Jesus I will be a man of peace my home will be of peace I reject depression I reject worry I reject frustration I embrace the peace of God peace above money peace above fame Peace above prestige. Peace above accomplishments. This must be your understanding. You must embrace the peace of God above and beyond every other thing. I want to prophesy to you in closing. Hosea chapter 12 verse 13. Help us media. Hosea 12 13. This will be the last service for the year many of us from tomorrow will be traveling you cannot 
ignore the place of prophecy it says and by a prophet the lord brought israel out of egypt and by a prophet was he preserved listen when israel cried in egypt god did not go to them to rescue them god went to a man and said are you hearing my people cry are we together god would have gone to egypt and said, okay i have come but god went to a man and left the salvation of the people in the hand of a man he says by a man by a prophet the lord brought israel out of egypt right he says and by a prophet was he israel preserved listen one of the greatest revelations i've had this year is understanding the operation of the body of christ the bible says that the church give us ephesians chapter 2 please let's just look at that one scripture i'm about to prophesy to you and i need you to have this understanding ephesians Let's look at 19 and 20. 19 and 20, quickly, please. Ephesians 2 19. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints. And he said, All of you are members of the household of God. Right? 21. Okay, 20. He says, And are built upon what? The foundation of the apostles and prophets jesus christ himself being the chief cornerstone listen you must understand how god built the body he said the moment you get born again there are two ministries you must encounter if your destiny must arise he says you must encounter these foundational ministries the ministries of the apostles and the prophets it's not about human worship it's how god built the kingdom he said it is built upon this truth foundation there means upon this truth this revelation is called the foundation of the lord he said nevertheless the foundation of the lord does what stand sure you can't change it it stands sure so by a prophet every time people cry god never comes to them he comes to them through a man go and read your bible when there was famine god came to a man there are human beings that god have sent that hold the prayer points of people that carry anointings that can open the destinies of people but the bible tells us that you have a role to play let's look at that one scripture second chronicles 2020 20, right your job is to believe second chronicles 2020 20. he said believe in the lord your god so you shall be established but it's not enough to just believe in god he said believe in his prophets he didn't say the prophets believe in his prophets so shall he make progress so shall he do well so shall he prosper see this is the formula don't try to create another one you will punish yourself for nothing the church was built on the foundation Every time God hears the cry of a people, he goes to a man and he says, you heard their cry. I thought God will come to Egypt by himself, but he went to Moses. When creation was crying in sin, Jesus had to become a man because they searched and no man was righteous enough. So Jesus became a man even god did not come directly he had to become flesh are you not seeing how it works when the revelation of the of the new testament was to come to the body a man had to be found in the name of apostle paul and he brought that fellowship of the mystery to the body of christ when satan wants to destroy you he will make you believe in god and disrespect his prophets are you seeing that he won't tell you to stop believing in god 
you say believe in God after all everybody has equal access to God and you will fool yourself and see that you are praying and fasting but nothing is happening when the widow in Zarephath was in trouble God went to a man immediately and said I have commanded you go are you not seeing it when Samaria was in trouble I thought God would have gone to them he never went to the lepers he brought in a man and he said by this time the moment the man spoke God looked for lepers in other words the tool God will use is not necessary let the prophecy just come he can use anything an axe head can float back when a stick comes but it must be at the instruction of the prophet he said alas master for it was borrowed and he said where fell it if that man threw a stick nothing would happen but he did it at the word prophecy is powerful I learned this from God's servant Bishop David Oyedeko he has changed the lives of people with prophecy but it only works to them that believe you don't receive a prophetic word from a colleague you don't receive a prophetic word from a friend I've taught it here there are individuals that are not pure human beings lift your hands God's ability God's ability is working in me is working in me God's ability God's ability is working in me is working in me sing one more time God's ability Hallelujah. I've shared with you again and again my visions. How that I saw an endless sea of people and they were crying. No food, no water. And I said, who is the cause? And they pointed at me. And I was afraid because some people had chased me to come into that small room where I was hiding. And I made up my mind. I said I was still going to go out and rescue them. If I perish, I perish. The moment I opened the door, I saw a giant and he held my hands and he said, I will walk with you. Brothers and sisters, this is not, it's not about human beings or human boasting. It's about God's spiritual system. Arguing it is foolishness. There are many prisoners today paying the... The foundation of the Lord and the Bible says that foundation is the ministry of the apostolic and the prophetic I want to speak over your life listen the year is not too late for God to finish what he said he would do are we together oh no come on we have at least 20 more days it doesn't take time is it not a prophet of God that said by this time tomorrow it doesn't take time is, is only unto men according to their faith don't say it's the end of the year god does not work with human calendar he works with his word the moment the word of god comes he said he said let there be and there was in the name that is above all names i prophesy over your life every package that is meant to come into your destiny in this year of the rain that is yet to be delivered I prophesy it into your life right now in the name of Jesus I prophesy it into your life right now in the name of Jesus I prophesy it into your life right now in the name of Jesus every request you have dropped here from January, February, March, April, May, and now it's December, and it looks like God has failed you. Let me prophesy to you that by 31st of December, in the name of the Lord Jesus, you will be holding your testimony. I prophesy to you 
that by 31st of December you will be holding your testimony it may not be possible with men but the Bible says with God we are involving God in this talk every level of prosperity you should have entered in this year of the rain and for whatever reason and by any means you have not entered it let this next 20 days days of supernatural supplies hallelujah that spirit that destroys men towards the end of the year that people would have labored have you seen obituaries 28 december 29 december some even 31st in the name that is above all names may a seal of longevity come upon your life may a seal of longevity come upon your life i forbid death from coming towards your habitation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I pray for you the frustration you usually face at home there are some of us December times are times of pain poverty this December will be the best you have ever had I prophesy it this December will be the best you have ever had in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that has troubled your heart, everything that has brought tears to your life, you cannot even share with people because of the pains I prophesy to you. Tonight, the Prince of Peace is stepping into that situation. I declare unto you the Prince of Peace is stepping into that situation. Every challenge in your health, every sickness, I don't care what it is, that has refused to go this night in the name of Jesus, we challenge it and we command it to live your life forever. We command it to live your life forever. A dimension of favor you did not see from January to November. I decree that you will have it beginning from this night. I prophesy it again beginning from this night. Not tomorrow, this night. May that dimension of favor come over your life in the name of Jesus. Everything you are praying for is restoration. There are people who have lost things and you are trusting God. You are saying, Lord, before the end of the year, let a miracle come. The Bible says they are taking for a prey and none say it restore. In the name that is above all names, I prophesy restoration for you. I prophesy restoration for you in a way and a manner that you have not heard. Listen, did you hear the testimony of Pastor Femi and his family? 18 years even if it's one one thousand they are paying you every month at the end of 18 years you will have something to smile enough with if your salary was hundred thousand calculated times 18 years plus benefit and allowance that kind of restoration in the name that is above all names may it come upon your life tonight i prophesy to you receive that restoration right now The testimony that you need to take home as an evidence that this was the year of the rain for you. The testimony you must hold and tell people, look, this is a symbol of God's faithfulness. I release it upon your hand right now. I release it upon your hand right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
may you be a burning and a shining light in the name of Jesus Christ through your hands many will be healed through your hands many will be saved I place an unction of the almighty upon you that as you go back to your various locations and stations you will come back with a harvest of dramatic testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ next year for you will be a it will be a balance brought forward of everything everything in the years past that have refused to come it will be a balance brought forward for you in the name of Jesus Christ listen it is still the year of the rain are you hearing me it is still the year of the rain and I prophesy to you whatever the rain represents within these few weeks we have to the end of the year may you experience the full revelation of what the rain represents hallelujah any human upon the face of the earth who is holding the key to your blessing the key to your breakthrough in the name that is above all names from the north to the south the east and the west between now and 31st december by prophecy i call them into your life by prophecy i call them into your life in the name of the lord jesus christ samuel told saul he said as you go back you will find out that the donkey that has been missing has been found and then he said you will see three men you will see them holding bread they will give you from the bread whoever is holding what is supposed to be given to you whatever resistance and manipulation from hell is stopping them from releasing it i command that between now and the end of the year it comes into your hands in the name of jesus christ i pray for every family represented here the kind of christmas celebration you have never seen from birth in the name that is above all names may it be experienced this december whatever ties away financial supplies from your families during this festive period so that they celebrate christmas like frustrated people i decree and i prophesy in the name of jesus may it be a different one this time around for those of you who are going to be traveling far and wide we declare that the mystery of the blood goes with you all through in the name of jesus christ in one minute I'd like you to ask everything remaining that you want God to do. Please, in one minute, go ahead. I'm releasing my faith with you. In one minute, every other thing you are trusting God for. Don't say it can't happen. Open your mouth and pray. Oh, I release my faith. I release my faith. One can chase a thousand. Two can chase 10,000. Open your mouth and place a demand on the faithfulness of God. Lord, I still believe you. Pray. Tell him, I still believe. Today is the 11th of December, but I still believe. It says unto him that answers prayers shall all flesh come i agree with you that whatever you have declared before god may it become a testimony in the name of jesus christ hallelujah let me make an altar call quickly please i'd like everybody to be around this is our last service i'll make some announcements there are people inside and outside this is the last service you probably were here from January, February. And every time you hear an altar call like this, 
something resists you from coming out maybe you've never experienced this peace with this prince called jesus or probably there are some of you who have given your hearts to the lord but at one point or the other you found yourself derailing this is our last service let this be the service where you give up on yourself and embrace his majesty i'll count one to five wherever you are i believe that there are still people outside there are still people inside please leave your seats don't wait for anybody to come before you make your way to the front right now one i count one to five wherever you are god bless you as you come they are coming there are people coming from inside and outside clear the way for them god bless you god bless you god bless you don't be ashamed this is the last service for the year let it be that at the last koinonia service you make a decision for jesus the next will be again will be 2016 don't enter 2016 on sale god bless you as you come there are still people god is speaking to outside make your way and receive this prince of peace he will change your life forever hallelujah i salute all of you who are coming the prince of peace the prince of peace is all you need in your life and a simple prayer of faith if you are coming please come and join them clear the way for them come and join them god bless you the devil is a liar don't let any devil stop you as i'm talking if the holy spirit is still speaking to you make your way i know time is up but you need to be saved make your way to the front in the name of jesus christ hallelujah the prince of peace listen he will bring beauty and glory out of your life it doesn't matter what you have done men can condemn you but let me tell you something the mercy of god that throne of grace and mercy is always there he will wipe your sins as if it never happened that's the mercy of god i'm going to lead you to a prayer and i want you to pray passionately from your heart you are not reciting a poem praise the lord pray it from your heart you are talking to a real person his name is jesus and as you pray that prayer a miracle will happen to you and you will leave here tonight having the greatest gift any man can have lift your right hand high above your head so that the devil doesn't think you are pretending and say after me lord jesus i believe in you i know you are the son of god and i believe i ask you tonight forgive my sins cleanse me from all unrighteousness I cry for your mercy I'm tired of living my life my own way this night I make up my mind before your people that you are the Lord of my life I receive eternal life into my spirit and I declare that the power of sin is broken over my life let me pray for you father these hands that are lifted receive them and let this be the beginning of a real encounter in their lives i break the power of sin over your life and every voice that speaks judgment i declare that the throne of mercy silences that voice forever in the name of jesus you stand before his presence as though you never sinned having the righteousness of his dear son jesus christ that's the gift he gives you for believing in him and i supply grace upon you to live the victorious christian life this will not be an emotional decision for you to go back to the flesh from today you rise higher and higher never to go down again in the name of jesus christ i welcome you to the greatest family on earth god's own family in the name of jesus christ hallelujah now there is a lady waving her hands I'd like you to just walk up to her. She'll have your details and will follow you up from the details. So please make sure you supply your details. God bless you. Celebrate them as they go. Celebrate them, Koinonia.